Good morning and welcome to day five here at the Tollcross International Swimming Centre for the fifth day of action for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Well, carry on. Seriously, <laughs> what a meet so far. Last night, you're obviously on Sky Sports 2, which again will be on tonight at 6 o'clock. Of course, the live stream will still be here, but you'll be there live on Sky Sports 2 at 6 o'clock. How was the action for you last night? It was a really exciting evening. We had Siobhan Marie O'Connor in the 200 IM. She broke the English record in that event, which was great to see. But um, we just had such a great night. We had Francesca Hulsell. She did not want to be second in that 50 ba butterfly, and she wasn't. She won it, so she was really pleased with that as well. Now, today, Today we have some great events. We've got kind of what we would call jewels in the pool today, haven't we? So we're starting off this morning with a men's 200 metre backstroke event. Then we're going to move on. So let's tell me the first jewel for the men's 50 freestyle. So we'll have um, Adam Brown and we'll have Ben Proud. Now those who have been juggling all the different events that they've had so far, the butterfly events, the freestyle events. So I'm pretty sure that today Ben Proud will want to make sure that he gets up on that podium. And then we move on to the women's 50 metre backstroke. So again we'll have the jewel of Georgia Day 
Davies and Lauren Quigley on that one. And the SM8 200 metres individual medley for the men. So in that one we have Sean Fraser and he's going to be versus Oliver Hind. And the women's 200 metre butterfly, another jewel going in that one. <laughs> I know. So we have uh, Tilly Gray and we'll have her against Amy Wilmot who we saw earlier in the week in the 400 medley and last night in the 200 medley. And then we finish off with the men's 1500 metre freestyle, another jewel in that one as well. Yeah, so tonight we'll see Daniel Fogg again. He was the British champion last year, but we'll have him versus Nick Granger who's had a blinding meet so far. So if that isn't in enough for you then I don't know what is however we've got a treat haven't we after the yes. men's 1500 meter freestyle so today we have another big versus and that's going to be Rute Melitute versus the clock it's a one-off special 50 meter breaststroke so make sure that you stay tuned all the way to the end of the session because I can't wait to see her do that swim today so she is literally going against the clock she's going to be yeah. competing in the pool yes so remind me of the event again carry out so it's gonna be a 50 breaststroke that she's gonna do and it's just gonna be Ruta versus the clock. And she is the Olympic champion and the world champion. She's going to be competing in that race. So that's yeah. after the men's 1500 metre freestyle here or live on the live stream. So don't go anywhere because that's potentially a once in a lifetime opportunity for people to be watching. Now also an opportunity if you're watching then please send us in your tweets. We love to hear them and Kerry ann loves to answer any of your <laughs> questions um, within reason of course. So if you have got any questions for Kerry ann or anything that you've enjoyed, what's been your favourite race of the week and what you're doing this morning and where are you watching from? We want to see who can get the furthest away tweeted. We had Andrew Creelman tweet in from Brazil the other day, so can we beat that? So carry on, <laughs> what's the hashtag? So the hashtag is BGSC14, so make sure you put that in any of the tweets that you're putting either at British Swimming or at Kerry Ann Payne, which is myself, or at Hannah Creelman1, which is Hannah. So we'd love your questions. We really want to know where you are, though, what part of the world that you're in and, and where you are watching from. Indeed. Well, speaking of parts of the world and where you've been, Ross Davenport competed in the London Marathon yesterday. He's managed to get himself from London back up to Scotland. <laughs> so I'm going to hand you over to Ross Davenport and Bob Ballard for the commentary for this morning. Thank you, Hannah. Good morning, Kerry Ann. Good morning to you, wherever you're watching in the UK or around the world. It is day number five of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014 in Glasgow. Yes, I started with Ross Davenport, and then that was changed to Joanne Jackson. And for day five, I'm very glad to welcome Hopalong Cassidy to the commentary box. <laughs> morning. Um, I am back. I am back. How was it? Go on, tell us about it before we get our things underway. Uh, give, us, give us the gruesome tale of how yesterday was for you. Yeah, it was pretty horrendous. I've got to be honest, uh, it's the second marathon in a week and it, it certainly did tell its toll. Um, after eight miles I was really, really struggling, um, but managed to get there in the end and uh, that's it for me running now for, for at least a couple of months. So no marathon next weekend then? No, 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 no marathon next week. I think you should do, because I, I, I think you should do what Eddie Izzard did. Oh, what, what was it, did 40 in 40 days or something? Yeah, that's right. Well, maybe there'll be another challenge later, <laughs> but it won't be that, it won't be doing that. Well done anyway, time was? Uh, it was 3.42 in Paris and then it was 3.52 yesterday, but it was hot in London yesterday, it wasn't hot in Glasgow, uh, could have done with some of the, the Scottish rain in, in the capital, but uh, no, it's, it's such a great event and the support was fantastic, so I'm glad I've done it, next year you can do it. Uh, not a chance mate, not a chance, maybe round the block a couple of times, that's about <laughs> to my limit of rate. Alright, let's get on to the programme for the morning. And we are going, first of all, for the 200 metres backstroke. I think you do have my sheet, actually. He just waved a sheet at me saying, is this yours? And I went, no. And then I've just realised I've got, got last night. So here we are. It is the men's 200 metres backstroke. And there is your starting lineup. Six to go. Oliver Smith, Oliver Jeremy, Joshua Monitz, Elliot Turnton. And uh, Daniel Cross and Matthew Brigham are our lineup. The clubs are Cockermouth, Hammond and Waterlooville, Southport, City of Leicester, Borough of Kirklees, and City of Peterborough in the, the 200 backstroke. Well, we had a, a very exciting uh, 50 backstroke last night. Still not quite sure who won that one, but still <laughs> if you're watching in either Chris or, or uh, Liam, that was quite an interesting finish, uh, let us say. But Chris Walker Heaven was confirmed as the winner of the 50 backstroke with Liam Tancock in second. Neither, of course, uh, now do the 200. Liam rarely did anyway, and Chris has taken it out of his program just as the 50 and the 100 these days. So we're looking at the 200 backstrokers of the future. 
born in 96 and 97 for the most part in the first of the races we'll see we'll see four heats in total and we'll see how they get on in terms of their time this morning fastest in terms of entry time is swimmer in lane number four joshua moritz has been at 207 96 before yeah, it's just interesting what you're saying about chris walker having dropping the 200 meters backstroke from his program and having done that, he seems to have really kind of excelled on the 100 and the 50. So it's obviously worked wonders for him. But as we've seen, this is the future of British swimming in this event. So now Chris Walkerbin has given up this event and James Gollard has retired. So there is a void that needs to be filled. And hopefully in the next couple of years, one of these swimmers could be starting making their move onto the international stage for swimming for Great Britain. Yeah, it does leave a bit of a hole, though, in British backstroking at distance. So hopefully somebody is ready to fill that void and step up here. Maybe not quite ready at this meeting, but hopefully over the next couple of years we'll see somebody do that in terms of this race anyway. Elliot Toynton is having the best of 100 so far. In second place, Daniel Cross and Matthew Brigham. The turning time for Elliot of City of Leicester is 1.01.13. His best time so far is 2.08.02. Yeah, he's absolutely flying in lane number six. Or lane number five, sorry. Just starting now to, to be caught up by the other swimmers. He's obviously gone out very, very quick. And the rest of the field now are starting to eat back into that lead. As he comes into the final turn, the 150 meter mark. He's got one length to go as a push off this wall. Looking like Daniel Cross. It is Daniel Cross by three quarters of a second over Matthew Brigham in second. And third place to Elliot Toynton. So a fast time as far as he's concerned. Anyway, best time on the cards for Daniel. 135.29 at the turn. He needs to come back in at 33 seconds on the last final 50 meters to go under his personal best of 208.38. But it actually does look like it is the swimmer in lane number three, three Oliver Jeremy. He's seen him swim a lot this week already. And he's going to take his first heat of the 200 meters backstroke in 2.08.44. So just slightly outside of his personal best. Second place going to Daniel Cross, 2.09.67. So good finish though from uh, Oliver Jeremy of Hammond and Waterlooville. And third place to Joshua Moritz in a 2.10.99. Let's uh, confirm those results for you on the screen. That's how you your swimmers did if your club was represented today. On to heat number two of the 200 backstroke. And uh, yeah, you weren't here when we did this on Saturday, but uh, no relation in lane number six. Jack Warren Ballard didn't have a very good swim on Saturday either. Come on, Jack, you could do better today. I'm sure you can give him a run for his money. The, well, bat the battle of the ballards? Yeah, well, I, th I think he'd win the swimming battle anyway, <laughs> even if he wasn't swimming that well on Saturday. But uh, he goes in the two of the backstroke here. Adam Taylor of City of Sunderland in one. Joe Litchfield of Doncaster Darts in two. Joe Canlon Shaw now at City of Oxford in lane three. Callum Jarvis of Bath in lane number four. Uh, good year last year. Five is Charlie Balderson of University of Stirling. Jack Warren Ballard of City of Leicester in six. Nilo Leary of Abingdon Vale in seven. And Oliver Goodhue of Plymouth Leander in lane number eight. Yes, Callum Jarvis could be the man to uh, fill that void left by Chris Walker Hebben and by James Gullard. Yeah, that's right. I had a fantastic 100 meters freestyle last night as well as a, a great 200 meters. So he's shown his versatility here in the pool. He'll be representing Wales at the Commonwealth Games later. Joe Cannon Shaw in lane three is representing the city of Oxford, turning first in 28.76. Actually trains out in Dubai at Hamilton Aquatics, so he is representing Oxford, but he does most of his training out in Dubai. It's a nice place to, to be swimming, and he did turn first. Second place was Charlie Bolson of the University of Stirling. He's now moved up into the lead by the looks of things. Ross, as they come to the 100, he's gone from uh, just off the base to lead. 
leading the pack as they come into the 100 turn. 59.04 for Charlie. Second place for Joe Cannon Shaw. And third is Callum Jarvis. Fastest in the field is Callum, who is the only one in this field who's gone sub two minutes before today. Boston looking very, very strong. Really did exaggerate, really did accelerate from the 75 meter mark to the 125 meter mark. And he seems to just be pulling away from the rest of the field. Going into the final turn, a couple more meters to go, turn onto his front, flip his legs over, drive off the wall. You see a lot of his swimmers using a lot of the underwater phase. Well, he's never been sub two minutes before. 2.0005 is his entry time for here. So it looks like Charlie Balson, provided he doesn't blow up badly in the last 25 meters, no indication he's going to do so. He's going to have a very big new personal best to take away from his morning swim. He'll be hoping to advance. Of course, it's straight to finals tonight. No semifinals in the 200 here. Time, yes, yeah, he's gone sub, well, he's bypassed the 159. He's gone straight to the 158. 158.88 for Charlie Balderson. Second place for Callum Jarvis, 2.02.26. A little bit uh, slower than his best. And Joe Cannon short in third. That's a good new personal best. Big chunk taken out of it by Charlie Balderson. Looks rather happy with it. He certainly does. Absolutely fantastic swim. Didn't go out too fast on the first 50. Really did control it. And then from that 75 meter mark, he started to increase his lead over the rest of the field. And by 100, he was around about 0.8 ahead. And he just continued and continued to get further and further away from the field. And he's been rewarded by a very healthy PB of just over a second. Very, very pleased with that. And fully expect him to be making the final later on this evening. A couple of sub two minutes in this field. Marco Lockeren going in lane number five for Guildford and Joe Patching for Plymouth in lane number four. Let's see if anybody else of the lineup. Archie Mitchell of City of Sheffield, Callum Barrett of Loughborough, Liam Knight of Loughborough, William Harrison of Bath, Thomas Roberts of Nova, or Fraser Spooner of West Lothian can join them in the sub two minute bracket. Be number three. 200 meters backstroke. As I say, they were looking for a few more Englishmen, Scotsmen, and Welshmen to step up to the plate and start to put uh, some pressure on because at the moment it's an event where Great Britain is not very competitive. Yeah, well, yeah, yes and no. Uh, we, know we had Craig McNally last year at the World Championships finishing six, and he, he is one of those, he's, he's in that, that crop of, of talent that is an emerging uh, for British swimming. He stormed through his debut last year in Barcelona and oh yeah, absolutely fantastic to get into the final and to come six. He's not going to be here, he'll be representing Scotland at the Commonwealth. World Games, so he's opted not to swim this event. But in terms of the English guys, yes, there is a bit of a void, and there does need to be a bit of a step up from some of these swimmers. But when you look down the list, Joe Patchen, absolutely fantastic in the international meet in Leeds last year, and there's a couple of other guys there that you know can really hopefully push Craig McNally to bigger and better things at the turn. It's 57.93 at 100 for Joe Patching. Second place to Liam Knight, 58.79. And Marco Lochran in 58.86. Marco was a 200 meter specialist. On the 200 meters back, just, start, just dropped off a little bit. It's Joe Patchen that is still around about two meters ahead. As you look at the graphics on the, on the screen, he's coming into this final turn. Still way ahead, 128.89. Big gap over Liam Knight, 1.62 seconds. Just to give you an idea of what the rest of the world is doing, though. The likes of Kasuki. Gino are doing 154.23 and uh, even down to Ryan Murphy of the USA 157.29 Ashley Delaney in the 157s we don't have anybody in this field who's got anywhere close to 157 before but uh, certainly they'll try and put some pressure on Joe Patching will be 158 something 159 actually 159 4-3 for Joe Patching so not quite as quick as the previous heat second place to Liam Knight in 202.69 just slightly slower than Charlie Bolson in the heat before. He was on 158.88. He doesn't make the top 20 in the world rankings this year, but he's just shy, 0.2 away. So expect him to be around the 25th in the world this year for Charlie Bolson. And Joe Patchin will easily be making the final tomorrow night. 
to see if he or tonight, sorry, and see if he can go a little bit quicker. It's already looks shaping up to be a good head-to-head -head in the final, and we've still got one heat to go. Looks like we don't have no four or five. No, we, have, we have a five. We don't have a four. We don't have Ryan Bennett by the looks of things. Or indeed, a, oh, one's behind the block, so he's coming up in a moment, I think. Oh, no, 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 we don't. Looks like we might have lost two here. Yeah, no one, no four. We do have a five, but we don't have a six. No, that was six. Goodness me, we lost a lot here. Jacob Jezard is not here. Ryan Bennett is not here, which is a big surprise. I know he did the uh, Scottish Nationals last week, but he's not here. And on paper, he's the fastest in the field. So we've lost uh, a 148er, 158er. And uh, we're hoping that Jonathan Carlisle, City of Sunderland, might be the uh, man to step up here. He's got the uh, next best time in lane number five. Where is everybody this morning? Uh, I don't know. They feel as rough as I do. I won't be getting in, so... Uh... <laughs> Ryan Bennett was an interesting one. He's not swimming today, but he competed for England in Delhi in 2010. And will be competing for Scotland and this year. He's mm. competing for Scotland. So whether he's already got the qualification time that he wanted or needs to represent Scotland in a couple of weeks' time and has opted to pull out of this event, Roberto Pavoni in lane number six. He's also pulled out. Obviously got a busy programme this week, swimming fantastically well. But we do have Luke Greenbank and Jonathan Carlisle, as well as Isaiah. Mohammed. So expect it. Is, it is lane five. Jonathan Carlisle is going to turn first in 57.90. So over a second quicker than Charlie Bolson at the 50 percent uh, mark. One fifty, yeah, one fifty nine sixty one is his best. So he's been sub two minutes, but he's going to go considerably quicker than his previous best time if he keeps this going. Just watching uh, Joseph Hume in lane number eight making a really good charge through. This has been a great fifty for him, and the two of them will be very close when it comes to the turn. Just ahead by a body length is Jonathan Carlisle. Joseph Hume is just behind Xavier Mohammed in second place. But Joseph Hume suddenly had a real spurt on that fifty and went from well out of. Uh, the pack to very close to being at the front of it. Yeah, the fantastic third 50. 200 are all based around that third 50. You can really push on. You can really make inroads on the leaders, or you can really extend your lead over the rest of the field on that third 50. It looks like the rest of the field is catching up, and there's a line of four swimmers that are going to be heading for the wall. Xavier Mohammed might be favourite to get to the wall first here and does. 2.01.42 for the City of Cardiff swimmer. That's a decent standard for the morning. In fact, you know what? That's a three second personal best for uh, him. Gone from a 2.04 to a 2.01. That's a a big improvement. Dave Haller, the kind of coach, will be delighted with that. Second place is Luke Greenbank, and third place is Jonathan Kyla. So nobody getting sub two minutes there, but certainly a big improvement on the PB of Xavier Mohammed with a 2.01.42. First race, there you have it, the first race of the day so far. Don't forget the live stream is live throughout every single race. And of course, tonight you can see all the live action as well as on the stream on Sky Sports 2, where they're bringing you and your expertise, Kerry Ann, with all the live information. <laughs> so, first race of the day, Kerry Ann, we mentioned Charlie Balderson there as a, a one to watch. Yeah, well, that was, uh, I think it was around about a seven second PB. He was entered in on a 205 this morning and he went 158.8. He'll be in lane four tonight for that final, um, I guess, trying to get another PB. And no Roberto Pavoni? No Roberto, no Ryan Bennett, no Craig McNally. It seems to be a lot of people um, out of that race this morning. Craig McNally and Ryan Bennett are Scottish, so, you know, they have they did their trials last week, so maybe they just decided to take some time out. But to be fair to Roberto, he's had a lot on <laughs> yeah. this week. I think we'll forgive him the 200 backstroke. We can let him off. And you think the, the other two, obviously, because they swam last week, do you think that'll be advice from the coach or just maybe down to wanting to take a bit of time out for this one? I think it's a tough one when, when you're tapering and you're resting um, for one competition a week before and then to have to carry that on and if you start to feel bad then that's kind of a sign to, to kind of be like right that's enough now I can't carry on swimming anymore I'd rather not swim and swim a bad swim um, and they had swam already last week so that's probably why they've not entered in. Indeed because we've seen a lot of swimmers competing in a lot of races this week aren't we? Yeah so um, we've seen loads of people compete over hundreds of races at the moment. OK, well, we'll keep moving on with the action now for the heats of the men's 50-metre freestyle. Of which we have six, 
three go to start in the opening one. Alistair Wright in three, Yuzuki Ledyard in four, Adam Toon in lane five. One length of the tall cross pool, starting at the far end from our commentary position. So the fish right bang below us, and looks like all three of them are going to be pretty close. They certainly are very, very tight at 25. Just, I think, losing lane three, but four and five right together. You can see different techniques. Lane number six is going for the straight arm. And lane number five, Lagarde, is more of the technical, more what you'd normally see from a freestyle swimmer. And he's going to touch the wall first in 24.03. So a PB to kick off the men's 50 meters freestyle. PB for him, not though for the other two. That's quite a sizable chunk in a sprint taken out there by the winner and a very good one too from Yusuke Lejard 24.03 good start for him big boys to come later and these days if you're a 50 freestyle you've got to be what 6263 or like Adam Brown 66 I think he is isn't he yeah we were asked from in I was 62 and I was one of the smallest members of the 4 by 200 freestyle team and the 50 guys were a lot lot bigger so yeah you're looking at around about 64 65 66 and muscles on muscles, <laughs> a bit like yourself, Bob. Absolutely, I keep working at it. I can't get to the six foot four thing, though. No. Five <laughs> foot eight is about the best I can manage these days, or ever, for that matter. 21.65 is Avon Sullivan's best time in the world. We're not going to get anybody probably close to that, even when it comes to the final tomorrow night. But hopefully everybody in this bunch are going to improve on their personal bests. Ealing Pista, Loughborough, Rushmore, City Manchester Aquatics, Basingstoke, North Ayrshire, and Derwent side are represented here. John Slate has had a really good start from Basingstoke. He's trying to blaze the truck. Coming right back under his shoulders, Daniel Briggs. Six and five. It looks like being six, probably, yes. Just John Slater in 23. 3.85 so a slight improvement three 100s but it's an improvement nonetheless for him Daniel Briggs in second place and Liam O'Brien finishing in third 24.20 yeah, it's great seeing that the first two he's have been won in PBs and a slight PB from John Slater in 23.85 three 100 of a second improvement for him as we move on to heat number three of the men's 50 metres freestyle. The cyclically seeded ones don't kick on in until heat number four, which comes after we've uh, logically seen heat number three, which is up next. Daniel Spears in lane one. We've got Stevenson in two. Leo Jags in three for Loughborough. Four is James Brinkley of Swansea. Five, Warren Cannon of Bath. Simran Wilkes of Warrender in six. David Thompson, Loughborough in seven and Patrick McLachlan of Seven Oaks in lane number eight. In terms of their personal best supply to us, 23.56, James Brinkley in lane number four from Swansea University has the best time. But again, it's all a wash, it's all splash, it's all dash, and who's going to get there first? James Brinkley had a good start, just leading at the first 25 metres, but it does look like it is lane number two. They're starting to edge out this third heat, but as we all go to the wall, it is lane number two. Clifford Stevenson, 23. 3.46. Second place going to Warren Cannon in 23.60. And third to Daniel Spears of Millfield. That winning time again, 23.46. Sadly, we don't have his first name. All we get is, his, uh, is an L. Well, let's find out what his first name is because we all have to call him L. Clifford Stevenson. <laughs> is he a Leo? Is he a Lionel? I don't know. We need to find out, because it just sounds very impersonal calling him L. Clifford Stevenson every time we see him in the pool, doesn't it? There's a PB. So it's first three he's all going personal best. That was about a uh, third of a second best than he's been before. Somebody could tell us, please. We should be able to find this out. But uh, if anybody could tell us, uh, certainly from the Basildon Club. In fact, I know his coach is downstairs, so we'll go and ask him later on. But I can't fit him all on the graphic, you see. Or indeed on our sheet here, so it becomes L. He number four. Jack Smith in one. 
Owen Morgan's still going. <laughs> Owen Morgan is it's the only event he ever does. He doesn't do anything else. No, that's right. I used to race him as a junior, 14, 15 years of age, and he's still going. And it is lane number two. It is Owen Morgan that's had a fantastic start. It looks like he might take this fourth heat. Hello, the working posse. I know you're going to be watching this one very closely. He's going to get edged out by Miles Munro, though. 22.91 is the time for the winner. Owen Morgan with a 20. 3-1-2, how's that stand up? He's only just outside his personal best. Uh, Owen is now 45. No, he's not. He's uh, 30 <laughs> this year, but he just seems to have been going for such a long, long time. And third place going to Jack Smith in 23 4 2 It's very interesting. It's kind of almost like the, the Mark Foster scenario. He doesn't do the 50 fly either. He only seems to appear for the, uh, for the 53. He's come all the way up to Glasgow for what might be one swim. Yeah, that's right. He'll make the semi-final with that time, no doubt. And he always used to wear goggles, and then he went through a phase of not wearing goggles. But it looks like I didn't see him when he got out of the pool when he had goggles on this on this occasion. But uh, yeah, I remember racing him when I was 15, and he was a fantastic swimmer then on the 50 meters freestyle. And he's still showing what he's worth. He is actually 29. He's my age, not 45. We have the answer to the question. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Marvin. Downstairs for the information, it's Lewis. Clifford Stevenson. There you are, so we'll know in future not to just call him L. It's uh, next time we see him in the pool, we will call him Lewis, because we all know now. And uh, sorry for anybody who might have been offended that we didn't know his first name, but we do now, the Basildon Posse. It is Lewis. Right, on to heat number five of the 50 metres freestyle. Ben Proud going in lane number four for Plymouth. He's being pushed all the way by Kane Haggard, old adventure. Well, he was being until the last 10 metres, and he's just taken over as Ben Proud. 22.67. He's been 22.01, so uh, that's not quite on par for his personal best but he has two more swims to come he hopes anyway with the semi-final tonight and the final tomorrow night second place Kane Haggart 23 dead for him and third place going to Alex Garnett uh, sorry to Jack Thorpe of Edinburgh University really interesting that was because Ben Proud was you know, considerably behind Kane's guy 25 uh, sorry Kane Haggart at 25 meters so I don't know whether he messed up his start a little bit but he really did come through the last 25 meters or whether he's just messing around with the rest of the field and just dropped the hammer for the last 25 but he comfortably won the fifth heat maybe easily into the semi-final later on this evening land of the Giants time Adam Brown in lane number four alongside him James Disney may one side Richard Schaefer's on the other big Adam looked very good last night very good indeed in the 100 freestyle winning that. What can he do in terms of backing it up? He did tell me that he's got his jet lag out of his system now, so there should be no excuse for a poor swim this morning. Yeah, already at 15 metres, an arm length ahead of James Disney May, the swimmer just below him. And it is Adam Brown that's coming. He's all just switched oh, off. Oh, he's easing up. Just switched off. <laughs> oh, that's a glide. 22 7 4. Isn't it bad? If you can just flick a switch like he did at 35 metres and go, right, that's enough. Yeah, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling positive, I'm feeling cool, calm, collected. I'll do a decent time, it won't matter. 22.74. Easy, easy speed this morning. Yeah, that's right. He did what he had to do over the opening 25 metres and then around about 30 metres just flipped that switch, put himself into cruise control and still managed to take the win over James Disney May of Millfield, who actually tra they train together out in Australia. Australia? In America, sorry. And Richard Schaefer's of Edinburgh Uni coming third. I'm glad we found out about his first name because uh, Lewis Clifford Stevenson's made the semi finals in 15th place. So we'll be hearing about him later on today. But an easy qualification for Adam Brown just behind Ben Proud. So we're going from one event to the, uh, to the other today, the men's 50 freestyle and then the men's 1500 meter freestyle later on. Adam Brown is one that if we can sort of have a, a bit of a chat about him, he's just a powerhouse, isn't he? Yeah, he just had such a great start then and his arms are so long. When you watch him swim, he's, that his start was just so good. He, and this is exactly what he wanted to work on this morning. You could tell he wanted to work on his start because when he got to about 35 meters, he kind of took a little bit of a back step because he knew that he was going to make it. And just watch his arms go over there look double the size of anybody else you can arms. tell him out of the, the field can't you there <laughs> yeah. because he's so big 
and then he just decides, yep, I'm happy with that. I'll uh, ease off a tiny bit. I've still got, look at that, complete change in his stroke, and then a little bit of a glide into the finish. So he's got lots of things to do, and he still managed to win that as well. So should be quite an exciting semi-final tonight. And do you think he's got more to come then later on? I think so, yeah. I think he'll make sure that he gets the rest of that 50, um, you know, bang on all the way right to the end. Uh -huh. And, and from, from watching him in his 50 to 100, he's a, quite a consistent swimmer, isn't he? Yeah, so he consistently wants to swim well. He consistently wants to make sure that he's nailing his starts. He's nailing his turns, and that's exactly what he does. He does indeed. So let's move on now to the women's 50-metre backstroke heats. First one coming up involves seven swimmers. I'll show you that seven are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are all present and correct. Mayor Westlake of City of Sheffield goes in one. Woking's Anna Main in two. Rachel Helm of Tymouth in three. Stephanie Reynolds of Kelly College in four. Harriet West of City of Leicester in five. Another working swimmer. Hannah Burville in six. And Rachel Sharples of East Lothian in seven. It is not the 200 we saw last night. It's the 50 this morning. So here come the sprinters in the backstroke. Yeah, from one sprint to the other. This time it's the females on the back. And this is an incredibly tight heat. Looks like there is six swimmers all heading to the wall and separated by a couple of tenths. It's touch going to Stephanie Reynolds of Kelly College in 23.50. Anna Main of Woking with 30.51. And third place going to Mayor Westlake of the City of Sheffield. I think they're all pretty much in and around their personal best. In fact, in the case of Stephanie Reynolds, she has uh, just outside hers, but second and third in privy on their times. Mayor Westlake with the PB of 30.53. First four swimmers separated by four one hundredths of a second. That just shows you how tight the 50 event can be. And often are a nightmare for commentators, quite frankly, because until they touch the wall, sometimes you have no idea, as was evidenced by the 50 backstroke for men last night. 50 backstroke for women, this is. And heat number two, Raquel Matos of East Lothian, and Katrina Alder of Loughborough, Rebecca Sherwin of Team Ipswich, Catherine Willis of Loughborough in four, Charlotte Reed of Hatfield five, Chloe Golding of Ellesmere in six, Charlotte Bryan seven for Swansea, and lane eight, Emily Grant of the city of Aberdeen. Looks like the winner will come from our side of the pool here, Ross. Yeah, it does, lane number three. Rebecca Sherwin from Team Ipswich. It's her arm length ahead, and she does win the second 50 metres backstroke in a time of 29.87. Second place, Catherine Willis, the sister of Andrew Willis, in 30.22. And Catherine Older from Loughborough University, third in 30.30. So Loughborough University win second and third, but it's the swimmer from Team Ipswich that takes heat number two. Dave Champion, the coach of the Ipswich squad, will be delighted with that. First time Rebecca has gone sub-30, 29.87. So she's uh, broken another little barrier. Very important little incremental steps for a swimmer. Those little numbers that come down. It, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, whether it's 30 seconds or whether it's 20 seconds or whether it's a minute, two minutes, 150, 140, or 50 seconds for the 100 metres freestyle. There are all these little barriers. All these barriers that uh, swimmers want to get under. Interesting name in lane number four. I was just checking to make sure she's there, and she is there. Uh, I thought she might put us as a, as a kind of, in inverted commas, fun event, but she's there. It's Fran Housel in lane number four. So let's see what she's going to do. She is doing a multitude of events here. Not one we normally see her do. I've got to say, the 50 backstroke is not normally in the repertoire, so why is she doing it? She wants to qualify. Not that you can qualify in a 50-metre event, but she wants to do it, so when she gets to the Commonwealth Games, she will put her name in the hat for the 50-metre backstroke, and she's showing how good at backstroke she is. Already, what, two metres up on the rest of the field after 35 metres gone? This is a demanding, or commanding of, uh, show of speed from Francesca Housel, and she does win that. <laughs> 
in 28.55. And do you know what? She Again, she turned off the burners at about 35 to 40. So she's doing 28.55, and her personal best is 28.48. Uh, look at that smile. That's a cheeky smile, because she knows that there's so much left in the tank. It's amazing when she's been in the pool a lot over the last few days. Uh, she comes to an, an event that's not really hers by right, so not an event she normally does. She's still doing cracking times, 28.55. That's a good indicator of where she is. Yeah, I was talking to her the other day. She says she wants to qualify for five individual events at the Commonwealth Games, plus the relay, so she'll be a busy girl when she gets to Glasgow in around about 12 weeks' time. Well, let's get to the real backstroker, shall we? I mean, that's all very well, Fran Housel, but here comes Lauren Quigley, for heaven's sake, in lane number four. Oh, Southport Metro. Fran do freestyle, butterfly, now backstroke. She had a mile or something. We've seen, we've seen Lauren this week doing the freestyle events, doing the 200 metres freestyle. So a lot of swimmers now are starting to, you know, cross over onto different events. You know, it, was, it was Michael Phelps that really kind of showed us that what what he could do over different events some six or seven years ago, and now we're seeing some British swimmers trying their luck on other events. And it is Lauren Quigley that's leading this heat number four, the 50 metres backstroke. Love her stroke, love her positioning of her body in the water. It's very high, it's very streamlined, and it's not a bad time at all. It's the best of the morning so far. 28.34. That looked very, very good. In fact, I use the word majestic. The big key, isn't it, Ross, with the backstrokers, is to keep that body as high in the water as you possibly can. You don't want it to sink. You want to be able to pretty much see the whole torso floating on the top of the, the surface. Yeah, that's right. And also keeping your head nice and still. The head position doesn't move at all. The shoulders move around the head. But the head is always looking up. And you could, you know, if you put a, a cup on the top of the head, it would stay there. Lots of swimmers do train with cups on the head and they can swim 50 metres without it even dropping off. Or the cup. Last heat of the 50 metres backstroke. Georgia Davis goes in lane number four for Loughborough University. I mentioned that because she is the quickest in the field. 27.80. Can she get in around that 27.8 this morning? We don't have a lane number six, by the way. We've... Uh, jettisoned Charlotte McKenzie. She's not here, but uh, certainly Georgia is. And she has a very fast time on her mind as Georgia. Yeah, she's also got a very high straight rate. You can just see that head position now, nice and still, keeping her head above the water, and her arms are going like a windmill, and she's going to take the final heat in 28.35. So one one hundred of a second slower than Lauren Quigley, and a couple of tenths faster than Francesca Housel. So there is your swimmers. They'll be competing it out for this evening's semi-final, trying to get into the final tomorrow night. Jaeger Turner doing a personal best in second place, 29.16. Kathleen Dawson in 29.65. The qualifiers, as we watch the 1 to 8 confirm, will hopefully come up on the screen with the 1 to 7 in that case, of course. Uh, confirmed. I'll tell you that it's quickly Davis, Holsall, Turner, Full of Love, and the last one to make it through is Katrina Alder, along with Catherine Willis, making it in at 30.20. Well, we mentioned a battle, a duel between Georgia and Lauren. However, Francesca Halsall just comes into the mix there again. Yeah, she did look like she eased off in that last bit of the yeah. race. So I think tonight we might have a three-way battle between Georgia, Lauren and Fran. Although the two girls, also Lauren Quigley, she had, uh, you know, they had both had really good times this morning, a little quicker than uh, than Fran's, but she did ease off in the last bit. You see Interesting Lauren thing about Lauren, um, is that her, her backstroke finish isn't quite the same as like Franz and George Davis. She kind of just hits the wall and then turns around and look back, looks back, whereas the other girls tend to go under the water and just do their last stroke with like a little flick of their feet. Okay. Um, quite interesting. And which which style do you think is better? Is it is there either or? or? I'm not sure. I, I would have thought, and I had always done kind of the, the flick back in the water, so I'm not sure if she does that maybe just in the heats and finals, but I've seen her do it a few times now where she just touches the wall and then has a look back at the clock. OK, well, we move on now to the uh, men's 200 metres SM8 individual medley heats. There's only going to be one here. Only one swimmer. Ollie Hind of Nova Centurion, because Sean Fraser, I understand, is not feeling very well. 
So he has withdrawn. So this is basically a time trial. Although it says on the graphic, Sean Fraser, he's not around. So Ollie is going to do this all by himself. 2.26.40 is Ollie's time. We can see what he can do in terms of, well, it's really, really tough, this Ross, isn't it, where you have to swim against yourself and against the clock? Yeah, it is. And it's just literally like a, a training swim where he's going to dive in. There's going to be no one else around him. And he's going to try and produce his best. He, of course, is the uh, British record holder and the world record holder, too. So I'm pretty sure he might make the final for this event. <laughs> as long as he doesn't get disqualified, it's, it's difficult. Ooh, you have to be careful in the IM, don't you? You see what you said? It would be devastating for him to, to get disqualified this morning uh, when he's got no one else to compete against. And, uh, you know, pretty much going to win the gold medal. I say pretty much. Yeah. But he will do. <laughs> well, he definitely, well, he should do. I say, unless he gets DQ'd. And of course, we won't have a final tonight, but we'll wish that on Ollie. 2.22.76 is the time. In fact, yeah, the time we've got as the entry time is not his uh, best time. 2.22.76 is the best time. He did it at the Paralympic World Championships in Montreal last year. And Ollie really is one of the stalwarts now of the British Paralympic team in swimming. Sam, his brother, has retired now, so uh, Hind brothers are not competing against each other in competitions like this. Ollie at the halfway stage, 106.98. Ollie, being the competitive animal that he is, will not want to take it easy. This one is not taking it easy at all. Is, it going, is there going to be a final tonight for this event, or is this, is this it? Well, there will be a final tonight, so he's going to swim twice today. And you can see he's not taking it easy at all. He is powering down, so you know, this is good training for him to have two good quality swims in a day. The Hind brothers are really like the, the Brownie brothers of triathlon, and they have really moved para Paralympic swimming on in a big way in Britain. Well, I don't think he's going to quite get his 222 this morning. In fact, he's, well, you never know with Ollie. He could come back, but 152.84 is a cracking time. The rest of the world always take notice of what Ollie's doing because he does set the template these days for everybody else to chase. And normally they're looking at his feet because he's normally ahead of everybody else. He certainly was in Montreal. Perhaps he's just easing up a bit here. I think he is easing up a bit on the free. So I want to keep something in reserve for tonight. Yeah, that's right. He's gone to 150 meter mark and now he's just back off he's gone and done his race plan or he's just taking all the applause and he's just you know taking it nice and easy down the last 50. Yeah, so a standing ovation and a bow here as well well ollie had to do that all by himself and still comes up with a cracking time 227 17 now as you saw physically and visibly he was backing off with about 25 to go so if he's got another four seconds in the tank tonight and i presume he's not going to be too far outside of 222 we might see a new paralympic record tonight yeah to you, you said he backed off after 25 meters but it, he was really was easing back from 50 meters So good work there from Ollie Hind. Must be quite difficult. Well, it is difficult going on your own against the clock, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, they're trying to create a new generation with the, with the power of swimming in Britain. They don't want them to just, you know, make it straight to, to finals, make it quite easy. They, so, you know, Oliver did want to do the swim, and I know that there were representatives here that were watching him, so he had to make sure that it was a really fast swim, a really good swim this morning. And he was entered in a, tw a 226, and he went 227. So it's a pretty good start. OK, so we move on now to the women's 200-metre butterfly heats. Some tough times in the world this year. If you want to compete at that level, this is obviously about the juniors to start off with. There are the eight going in heat number one. And we will bring you, in total, five heats of the women's 200 metres butterfly. The teams represented here are best for Kirsty Armstrong, Kelly College for Chloe Barrow, Isabel Griffiths representing City of Birmingham, Lucy Thornton of Ealing, Western Supermare and Evan King, Katie Reynolds of Burnley in six, Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth in seven, and Zara Ryan of Newbury in lane number eight. So uh, 200 butterfly, we've seen uh, the boys have their go at it. Here 
come the girls. And looking again at the outside smoker, Zara Ryan's had a very, very good start in lane number eight. And she is just behind Katie Reynolds at the turn. Yeah, an excellent, excellent opening 50 metres from Katie Reynolds, 30.50. This is one of the hardest program, uh, events on the programme, 200 metres per flight. This and the 400 metres IM. Obviously not looking at Kerry Ann's event in the 10K. And that's not obviously swam in the pool. But this is one of the hardest pool events that there is. Something you certainly won't see me doing. But in the minute, it looks like there's three swimmers going to head to the wall at the halfway mark. They're going to be separated by less than half a second. Oh, second, sorry. And still is Katie Reynolds turning first in 105.67. This is where it hurts. This is where you need, really need to make your move on the 200 meter events, the third 50. And on the fly, as soon as your rhythm starts to go, then everything starts to go and you really do start to sink in the water and everything becomes so much more difficult. I mentioned it before that Steve Parry, our bronze medalist from Athens 2004 who did this event and got the bronze medal in this event says when you come off the wall 150 you expect an elephant then to leap onto your back because that's what happens everything up to about 150 is okay and you're feeling good and it's almost as if somebody says right okay you're gonna swim the last 50 with a huge great weight on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see now that Kate Reynolds still turned first at 150 meters mob. It looks like now it is King in lane number five, just starting to edge out in front. And there's going to be 25 meters to go, or 15 meters to go. Evan King, it is, who is showing the way home. And although she's being flanked all the way by Katie Reynolds, it is going to be lane number four. Is it going to be lane number two coming right into the mix? Chloe Barrow getting second place, missing out by 30 one hundredths of a second from victory. Evan King getting the touch in 219.48. That's a personal best for her. Second is Chloe Barrow in a 219.61 and 220 dead for Katie Reynolds. All these girls will be looking for European junior qualification times, or certainly most of them will be for later on this year. Heat number two. There's your lineup. I'll tell you the clubs in a moment because I know that uh, a lot of the clubs are watching online in the morning and in the evening, and of course on Sky Sports 2 from 6 tonight in HD. You can watch swimming here from Glasgow. Catherine Brown of City of Peterborough in one. Hannah Meek of Nova Centurion two. Georgia Coates of City of Leeds are having a great week, by the way. They're in three, or she's in three. Anna Newlands of Cockermouth in four. Harriet West of City of Leicester in five. Alice Deering of Royal Wolverhampton is in six. Robin Saunders of City of Salford in seven. Emma Castle of Middlesbrough is in eight. In fact, we have lost Hannah Meek in two. She's not here from Nova Centurion, but the other seven are racing, and they've completed the first First 50. Yeah, it is Alice Deering in lane number six. You see her normally in the open water events in the 800 meters as well. Europe, European junior champion from last year in the 5K. And she is now starting to open up a sizable gap over the first 75 meters. Just imagine that, 5K open water, 800 meters, 200 fly. Why don't you just do one of the easy events? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, some people like to put themselves through the ring. I like uh, two marathons in consecutive weekends. I can't think of anybody who really want to do that. Who kind of have the mental strength to do that, Ross no, I, I do. I, I do tip my hat to you for that one. I didn't want to do it. I had to do it. They forced you to do yeah. it. They made you do it. They pushed you around a little buggy, did they? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Catherine Brown in lane number one. She turned second at 100 meter mark, but now she is starting to edge out in front as the rest of the field start to catch Alice Deering. She's still out there in, in front. Look at her entry time here, Ross. 216.80. I'm sorry, an 18, so my is it? 218. 218, yeah. 218.80 is her entry time. Well, she's on course for a much quicker time than that here. Yeah. A massive PB if she carries this going. But it is Catherine Brown that turned first from the city of Peterborough in 140.75 and her entry time of 219.06. So these girls will be looking to go way under that time. Alice Deer is now starting to suffer for that opening 150 meter mark and it is lane number one Catherine Brown it looks like she's going to take this 
second heat. Yeah, she snuck up from virtually nowhere. Great swim by Catherine Brown. 216.38. That's a massive PB for her. Huge. That is nearly three seconds she's taken of her previous best time. Anna Newlands in second, likewise, with a good time. Third place to Anna Newlands. What a swim by Catherine Brown in lane number one. She's in the 216 range, gone from 219.06 to 216.38. At least the top four swimmers there all doing personal best times. Outside smoker did rather well. On to the next heat. Three it is of the 200 butterfly. Some names that may be familiar to you in here. Including four from Loughborough, Anna Cheeseborough, Rachel Kelly, Anna Sheridan. And uh, you all know the first name of Walston Thomas, won't you? Uh, Kate? Kate Wollstone Thomas. She's an eight. So we I guess. Can... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's a guess, is it? Okay. <laughs> again, we've got a K, but we haven't got a first name. So again, we'll, we'll get, our, uh, get our boffins onto that one. Uh, Hannah Jones, Davencio in one, in five. Danielle Lowe of City of Derby. Fern Davis of Swansea in six. Laura Stevens of Plymouth in seven. And uh, K Wollstone Thomas. K as an initial, Wilson Thomas, Loughborough University in lane number eight. All right, all the uh, intro for that race is pretty much done. We are at 75 metres. Lanes three, four, and five have all recently changed coaches, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on in the first big challenge of the year. Danielle Lowe's move to the city of Derby, Eleanor Sheridan is now being coached by Kevin Renshaw at Loughborough University. Rachel Kelly has moved to swim with a sprint coach in James Gibson, 50 meter world champion, breaststroker from 2003. So just because it's a sprint coach doesn't mean she doesn't know how to do the 200 meters butterfly. She's going very, very well, starting to catch up. Danielle, uh, Eleanor Sheridan, who's in lane number four. Danielle Lowe is in third. Just a little bit further back. Answer the question, by the way, Ross, is Catherine. Catherine. You said Katie, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was pretty good. Was, uh, if that was a guess, it was a very good guess. Edu Rachel Kelly, then. The, 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 educated guess. Yeah, well, I think you probably knew that, actually, all along. It's Loughborough, and you know what, everything there is to know about Loughborough. Rachel Kelly leading at the last turn. Eleanor Sheridan in second place. Third place is Danielle Lowe. We'll have a look down and see what their previous best times have been. Well, in this field, Eleanor Sheridan. Uh, 210 before now, 210.39. She's done a 211.95 for Rachel Kelly, 211.29 for Danielle Lowe. Look at them go to the wall together. Four and three, Eleanor Sheridan, Rachel Kelly. It's going to be Sheridan who gets there first. 212.22 in second place, Rachel Kelly, 212.58 for her. And third place going as we get the confirmation up on the board. Not quite there yet. Danielle Lowe getting third in 215.40. Not confirmed up on the board as yet. Now it is. 212.22, Eleanor Sheridan, Rachel Kelly in second, Danielle Lowe in third. Rachel Kelly has had an excellent week, winning the 100 metres butterfly. A surprise, a surprise win uh, for a lot of people and also on the podium on the 50 metre fly. So now she'll be looking to back it up with three medals and three events. He number four of the it's going to be a sponsor five for women. And another swimmer who's had uh, a lot of swims already this week and continues a pace is Amy Wilmot going in lane number four for Middlesbrough. The other seven swimmers, probably we have seven, I'm just checking if we do. Amelia Kleins of City of Leeds in one, Brianna Close of City of Manchester Aquatics in three, Emma Day of Guildford in four, Alice Thomas of Swansea in five, Isabel Grant of City of Sheffield in six, Ellis Jackson of St. Felix School in seven, and Tane Bruce of Carnegie in lane at number eight. We'll look at the centre lanes on this occasion, I think, for the uh, leader at 50. We are Alice Thomas just ahead of Amy Wilmot by about 28 one hundredths of a second. Yes, yeah, so we see the, the current British 400 medley swimmer being chased down by Emma Day. 200 metre butterfly European junior silver medalist from last year. At the minute it is lane number five. Thomas from Swansea University that's leading the field. They're really starting to increase that advantage over Amy Wilmot and the other swimmers, which turns first in 102.30. Amy Wilmot over a second behind in 103.48.
Amy will be looking to go 209 for the first time she can, if not tonight, when the final takes place. No semi-finals to remind you, and I keep saying this, but a lot of people will think the 200 goes to semi-finals. Not here, it doesn't. The 50s and the 100s do, but the 200s are straight to final. That means we get some racing in the morning because nobody can hold anything back with 200s. You only get the top eight places or else you're not involved in the competition anymore. And that's exactly what Alice Thomas is doing. She's attacking in this race. 136.68 at the 150 split. Amy Wilmot is about a second or so behind her. And third place is Emma Day. If Thomas can keep this going, she's got an edge time of 2.11.05. She'll be way under that if she can just keep this going. But it does look like the rest of the field is starting to catch her. Amy Wilmot is moving up to in line with her hip. And it's going to be a fast finish from Amy Wilmot. And she has the momentum going forward as we approach the final five, almost neck and neck. Who's can going to get Can she hold on? Can Who? she hold on? Yes, she does. Ooh, by a tenth of a second, 2.12.77. Amy Wilmot, 2.12.87. And third place to Emma Day. So very, very close. Amy was uh, pursuing her prey. And I thought she was just about to gobble her up at the end. But uh, Alice Thomas just about, only just, hanging on for a 2.12.77. And uh, Amy just a tenth of a second back. I think she's going to be looking, uh, eyeing up that uh, 209 tonight. Emma Day in third place in 214.46. So uh, fastest of the morning so far. I think, what was Alan Sheridan's time? I've got a 212 down here. 212. 212. Yep. 212.18. All right, so she was quickest just. But we should see somebody, hopefully, go a bit quicker here. Maybe Hannah Miley. She should because she is uh, now, well, she's done 200 breaststroke, she's done 200 free, she's done 200 back. Uh, I, think, I honestly think now she could tick off virtually every single event on the calendar. I don't think there's anything that she has not done at some point. No, that's right, but it is actually Tilly Gray that had the, the best start out of the field. And it is now lane two. Atkinson from Plymouth Leander. It looks like he's going to touch the wall first. And she's actually second behind Georgia Barton. 1-100 one, behind. That's so Georgia Barton that turns first in 29.27. Back in from Plymouth Leander, 29.28. Hannah, of course, did the Scottish Nationals last week, so she's putting herself right through the uh, pain barrier and right through the mill in terms of doing the events last week and doing a selected range of events here. For the moment, she can't catch George about knocking anybody else for that matter. She's about a body link clear of Hannah Miley who's going to come in to touch in second place at the 100. Tilly Gray, 103.34. And fourth at the turn was Charles Atkinson. Just looking back at the splits from the, the heat before, Thomas, she turned at the 150 mark in 136.68 and pretty much died down the last 50. So she'll be looking to alter that for the final later on this evening if she qualifies. But at the minute, it still is Barton from City Manchester Aquatics. She turned first at 100 metres. And she's going to turn first at the 150 metre mark. And she turns in 136.21, so slightly quicker than the heat previously. But can she hold on to that lead now as we come down to the final 50 metres? Well, it's looking like it. I thought Hannah Miley was going to challenge her coming off that last 50 turn. At the moment, she's not that far away. Maybe she still will. Georgia Barton is aware that uh, the presence of Hannah Miley a couple of lanes away. She'll also be aware that Tilly Gray is making some progress, but she's going to hold on. She is going to hold on just about, although Hannah Miley is closing with every single stroke. There's enough in reserve for Georgia Barton to take this in 2.11.41. She wins it by just over four tenths of a second. Hannah in second, Tilly Gray in third. Charlotte Atkinson will stop the clock at 2.14.57 in fourth place. That's personal best for Georgia Barton, winning the final heat, number five. And that is the fastest qualifier for tonight's final. Yeah, 2.11.88 second is also the second quickest time of the morning for Hannah Miley. So we'll have, before we hand you back to the studio, the top eight. I can tell you who will have qualified for tonight's final. Here it comes. George Barton, Hannah Miley, Eleanor Sheridan, Rachel Kelly, Alice Thomas, Amy Wilmot, Tilly Gray. And that is seven of the eight. They're just going to take it off the board. But there you go. That's the final four tonight of the 200 Butterfly.
So big names there in the mix for that event. Coming up next, we have the men's 1500 meter freestyle. And then after that, of course, as we mentioned earlier, we have a special swim, don't we? A spectacular swim. I cannot wait to see it. It's going to be Ruta Melitute. She's going to do 50 breaststroke against the clock. I cannot wait for that. And when we say against the clock, who knows what, what that could mean? Could that mean a... You know, a very, 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 <laughs> very. fast swim. <laughs> I think so. So make sure that you stick around for that because that's going to be coming up after the men's 1500 meter freestyle. Now, we saw the men's 50 freestyle earlier on. Now we're seeing the 1500 meter freestyle. It's such a tactical and interesting race to watch, isn't it? Yeah, especially in a, in a heat session where you've got, you know, Nicholas Granger in the second to last seat, but with Dan Fogg in the last seat. So Nicholas isn't going to know what time he can go to comfortably make it into the final. So he's just going to have to pace his own race I'd imagine he'd break it down into 500 meters and then that last 500 will just be you know seeing what he can do okay we'll make sure you watch all of these heats because like we said Ruta Melutiti will be swimming after that as well so stick around it's the men's 1500 meter freestyle heats I remember seeing Robbie Rennick down in Swansea doing a 1500 meters freestyle and I normally known as a 200 and a 400 freestyle as indeed was a certain Ross Davenport known as a 200 and 400 freestyle. Did you ever do the 1500? Never. <laughs> <laughs> right way. You might be able to do two marathons but you never did the 1500 did you? As the start list for the opening heat of the 1500 meters freestyle there are four in total and we're looking at the uh, youngsters who uh, are going to put themselves through. I actually always ask this question and I've never really got a sensible answer for anybody who does it. Why does anybody, well first of all do open water, Kerry Ann can answer that question, but the 1500 metres freestyle is such a slog, especially when you know you're not going to get in the final. I mean, and many of these boys would know their times are not sufficient to get into a final tonight. Why would you put yourself through 16 minutes nearly of torture? Well, I've never done one, so uh, I can't really answer that question for you. But uh, uh, I have done one short course before, and it seemed like the longest, I can't remember what time I did, but certainly probably 16, 17 minutes of my life. Um, but the, hopefully these guys are, are the future of British swimming, so this is all great experience for them to be able to swim here in the Commonwealth Pool. The Commonwealth Games will be coming up in about 12 weeks' time. And this is probably the, some of these guys, but it's the biggest swim of their lives so far. It'd be great to see them post some lifetime best. And Interesting game. too, Sir Ross did try it. Interesting to see how the 1500s has developed over the years. And when I first started covering swimming in the 90s, um, the 1500 was a fairly predictable kind of race uh, in terms of the way people would swim it. They'd rep their 60s or whatever. And then Grant Hackett came along and Kieran Perkins came along and suddenly they were doing very, very quick first 200s or 300s or 400s and almost going out like sprinters to set the pace, almost killing off the opposition. Yeah, I actually think that this, when this is swum internationally and it's a closed race, it's one of the most exciting races of the program because this really is a, a survival of the fittest. And as you said, people like Grant Hackett used to take it out extremely quick over, over the first opening 500 meters. And it's now changed the way that the 1500 meters is swum. David Davis, our most successful swimmer, male swimmer, he was able then to, to start to, to train off that. And, to, and to, when Grant Hackett used to fly off, he was able to then chip away at Grant Hackett and he never actually caught him, but he, well, he went on to, to win a bronze medal at the Athens Olympics in 2004. So, you know, it has changed the way that this event has been swum, and it, for me, it makes it a lot more exciting that we're not just waiting 1,450 metres and it comes down to a sprint finish. You really do see who's the fittest, who's been training the hardest, and, uh, you know, it can be a fantastic event. And of course, we are talking about a Chinese swimmer who we saw in Shanghai who won a 50 freestyle burst in the last week. Virtually would have uh, got him involved in the medals in a 50 freestyle, wouldn't it? Yeah, he's just... Uh, uh, you know, he's just, uh, I don't really know what to say about him. He can just do every single event. Uh, I've raced him plenty of times. Sun Yang over the 200 meters freestyle. Never beat him. And then he goes on to break the world record in the 1500 meters. And I just say he can do the 100, he can do the 50. Not, not exactly world class on the 50 or the 100, but he is on the 200, 400, 800, and 1500. 
had his problems over the last year or so. We must, we must say that uh, hopefully we'll see him back in the international competition shortly, but he's had a, a few little problems away from the ball. Yeah, he keeps seeing to, to changing coach or falling out with his coaches or the Chinese authorities are you know, telling him he needs to train with this coach or that coach. So, yes, he had his problems, but uh, he, he's, he's probably the, the greatest long-distance swimmer that we will see. And he's only been around for the last three or four years on the international phase. But, uh, you know, expect to see big things from him or even bigger things from him over the next three or four years. I have to say that swim in Shanghai is one of the most astonishing things I've ever seen in any sporting arena where a guy is something like six seconds outside world record base and suddenly gets it back over the last 200. You think, well, that, that you can't get that six seconds back over 200. And he virtually got most of it back over the last 50. Yeah, absolutely incredible. He just, whenever Sun Yang brings his legs in, that's it. It's a completely different ball game. He can just accelerate from the rest of the field, whether it's after 600 metres, 700 metres, or like you said, after 1,300 metres. He always seems to have something in reserve. And when he finishes, he doesn't really look out of breath. You know, he really is a, a fit individual that can just pretty much do absolutely anything. Got a few fit individuals here in terms of the juniors looking to emerge into senior ranks very soon, including the likes of Thomas Nelson, who is leading the field here at the 400 mark, 410.11 for him. Second place to Tobias Robinson, 412.20, and third place to Jack Bates. I don't think I've given you the different clubs involved here, so I should. So you're watching him see how your swimmers perform. Borough of Kirk Lees for Carl Chisholm, Tobias Robinson representing Royal Wolverhampton, Wirral Metro and Thomas Nelson. Borough of Kirk Lees again with uh, Matthew Hinchcliffe in five, Jack Baster of Middlesbrough in lane number six, and uh, lane seven is Daniel Wheeler of the city of Newcastle. Quite a big lead. Well, he had opened up quite a big lead. It's been eaten into a bit now by um, Tobias Robinson. Thomas Nelson still leading, but Robinson's coming back. And of course, this race does often transform during the course of the 1500. That's right. So, lane two, Couchism from Borough of Kirklees. He led on the opening 100 meters, 59.75, and now he's a good oh, six, seven seconds behind. So, it's an event where you can, you know, if you've got it in you, then yes, go out strong. But if you haven't, and don't get carried away, it is, you know, mind the pun, it is, it is a bit of a marathon. <laughs> and you don't want to be sprinting away down the first 100 metres because you really will pay for it over the rest of the, the 1,400 metres and especially the last 500 metres where that's where the rest of the swimmers really do crack on and start to move towards the, the end. And if you've already spent all that energy on the opening 200 metres, then you've got nothing left. I know you've only done one 1500 short course, but during the course of 15, 16 minutes, what are you thinking about? Well, I, well, I was that far behind. I was singing to myself. So, uh, but these guys <laughs> will, will know will know the feeling of what a uh, a 102 feels like. So they'll be all the time. They'll be concentrating on their stroke. They'll be trying to push it along, and they'll be continually monitoring how they actually are feeling. So whether they actually feel like they've got so much more energy now that they can crack on, and they all they'll all have a game plan whether that's to separate it up into 500 metres or 400 metres, whatever they've worked with it on their coach. I remember David Davis doing his first 1,500 metres at the Commonwealth Games back in 2002. He didn't know how to swim it, and his coach just said, right, first 500 metres, you know, take it as a bit of a warm-up, build the next 500 metres, and then sprint the last 500 metres. And I can't remember where he finished. I think he finished around about fifth or sixth in the Commonwealth Games, mm. and then two years later went on to win a bronze medal at the Olympic Games. So that that's how people swim it, um, but they will have a game plan and they will try and stick to it the best of their ability. Sometimes you'll, you'll be better than that, and sometimes it just won't work out because for whatever reason, whether you don't feel uh, great in terms of in yourself or whether you've not done the training to be able to carry out that game plan, but they'll all have a game plan that they, they want to stick to. The remarkable thing about David was, as you say, he hadn't done a 1500 competitively until he did it at the Commonwealth Games in 2002. And then that year he went to the European short course in December and won a medal at that. Yeah, his, uh, his rise on the 1500 metres was rapid. I went to the European juniors with him in Austria 
the, uh, about six weeks before the Commonwealth Games, and he did the, the 200 meters and the 400 there. He didn't even enter the, the 1500. Came straight back, went to the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, and he popped up and did the 1500. So you know he was another one of those swimmers that could actually do the whole the whole repertoire from 200 all the way up to and then where he went on to go and get a silver medal in the 10k. So not many swimmers have been able to do that, um, but he's you know exceptional athlete. And he's won two Olympic medals from two different Olympics on two different events. And he still has the British record in this event. Uh, but sadly, from his point of view, lost the British record in the 400 freestyle the other day. James Guy's now got that. Yeah, James Guy, a fantastic swim in the 400 metres freestyle, just lowering the British record by around about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, what was great about that was Dave was in the crowd to watch it. So uh, I know we've already mentioned it, that if it's your record, it's not there to be broken. If it's everyone else's there... Feel free to break them left, right, and centre. So it's, uh, it, you know, he wouldn't have liked his, his record to be gone, but, uh, you know, James Guy is going to go on and, and, and smoke many records over, yeah. his, over his career. He's still only 18 years of age. Your English record will go to the Commonwealth Games. That I am sure <laughs> of. That I am absolutely positive. Your 200 record is going to go at the Commonwealth Games. Only because you want it to go. I want it to go. I don't like records sitting on the books for a long time. <laughs> Zoe Baker's 50 breaststroke record is there after 12 years. Yeah, that one can be broken. And just keep the 200 freestyle English record. <laughs> Keeping back to where we are, and uh, things are pretty much as they were in this race. Still the same leader, Thomas Nelson of Wirral Metro, 8.58.58. So the gap between him and the rest is about four seconds over Tobias Robinson with Jack Baster, who has moved into third place for Middlesbrough. But the Wirral Metro swimmer in lane number four is looking very, very good. Uh, how much should the legs go in a 1500 freestyle? Should it be all about? arms or should the legs be involved at any stage? They need to keep a rhythm with the legs and you can see now, you know, there is about a two beat leg kick, so two kicks to every stroke cycle. But what's good, at, what's great about uh, Thomas is, he's underwater, is fantastic. And, you know, he's going around about six, six, six and a half metres off each wall. If you can do that off every wall, it means you're not swimming that distance. And a lot of, you see a lot of swimmers that will pop up after two or three metres and just lose all the momentum from the wall. But he's carrying that momentum off the wall. Uh, just going to have a look at him as he comes into to this turn. He's got five metres. And we'll see him, he's going around about six metres underwater. Yep, just under six metres. If you can do that off every wall. And that's something you can't naturally do. You know, you have to train for that. And, it, you know, you, everyone can go 10, 15 metres off a wall in training if they do it once and somebody's watching them. But to do it on a 1,500 metres, when it's 30 yard lens, you know, that, that's, that takes a lot of dedication. And this is a great feeling now, knowing that you are 10 metres up on the rest of the field. Everybody's watching you. Everyone's following your splits. And he's turning there at the 1,000 metre mark in 10.34.84. So he's around about 63s per 100. And this is probably now where you've probably seen probably bringing his legs a little bit more, increase, increase the stroke rate as we're coming into the final 500 metres. 18 years of age this year is Thomas Nelson, our Wirral Metro. And you see that lead visibly getting bigger. There was, what was it, about five seconds when we had the last turn at this end for Nelson. Looks to be appreciably more than that now. 6.07 over Tobias Robinson with Jack Baster in third place. So the lead is not being trimmed into. If anything, he is pulling away, but uh, this is the really tough part of the race for him now. He'll have uh, 400 more to go when he comes back up the, this end. Can he uh, get a time? Which, see, well, certainly, of course, for a very big personal best, provided he doesn't tie up, and there's no evidence he's going to. The lead is still sizable. We'll get another measure of it for you here. 11.39.10 for Nelson. It was six seconds. It is getting bigger. Another half a second taken out of the field. Tobias Robinson, 6.66 in second place, and Jack Baster still holding on to third place. He's got an entry time of 16.06.71. The last 100 was around about 64.65, so he's, he's slipping off a bit, but on average, he's still around about 63.64. So if you can just keep this going, He's looking for a sizable PB. Going under 16 minutes for the first time. That'll have been his aim coming into this competition. 
Yeah, it's a big barrier. Obviously, the uh, 15 into 14 for the more established swimmers is the big, big barrier. But uh, to get into the 15 ranks, very important for the likes of Thomas and for Tomas Robinson and Jack Baser, if they could get in and around. That was certainly the way he's cracky on here. Thomas Nelson is going to put himself well inside that 16-minute time. I think the lead might be getting a bit smaller visibly. Let's have a look. The clock will tell us. It's probably not much, though, uh, for the rest of eaten into it, but it doesn't look quite as big as what well. maybe it is, actually. Hang on. Here we go. Seven seconds. 6.98. So there is a slight improvement for Thomas Nelson over the rest. Not as big or as appreciable as it was, but uh, certainly visibly, he's a long way down the pool. The other two having a good scrap. Good scrap anyway for second place now between Tomorrow. Robinson and Jack Baster. Just actually started to, to make a move then. He just brought his time down from a 65 on the previous 100 to a 64. So now we know there's only a few lengths to go on this event. And he's starting to wind it up. Coming to the final 300 meters. It was got 25 meters to go, then he's got 300 meters to go. So this is where it's really going to start to bite. So you're almost there, but you still have another six lengths of this 50-meter pool to go. So how big is the lead now? It was around seven seconds for Thomas Nelson over the rest. It is now 7.27, so it was just inside seven. It's now outside seven, 7.27 seconds, and he really is cracking on that time. But that turn with 200 to go, 13, 48, 49. So, yeah, if he can keep those uh, 63s up, he'll be about five seconds inside his personal best, maybe six or seven seconds inside his personal best. Yeah, hopefully he'll have a little bit of a sprint down the last 100 meters as well. But it's going to be close where he goes under 16 minutes. That'll be a big achievement for him. Just does need to keep this going. That's the battle for second, and a very good battle it is too between Tobias Robinson of Royal Wolverhampton, closest to us in lane number three, and Jack Baster of Middlesbrough in lane number six. Those two are pretty much locked together, but they know the race is run in terms of trying to catch the leader who has been well clear for quite some time. That's a music to his ears, the bell to signify 100 metres to remain in the race to be swum for Thomas Nelson. 14.53, let's see if we can bring him back in a 63 here for a 15.56 finish. Second is Tobias Robinson of Royal Wolverhampton and Jack Baster in third for Middlesbrough. You'll see when he pushes off this final wall, he really will bring his legs in a lot more than he already has done and he'll head home this will be a, a very very nice feeling knowing that he, he's won this heat by around about what, 10 50 or 10 meters you can see now he's just bringing his legs in that little bit more straight race increasing Up those five meters to go looks like he's going to go under 16 minutes for the first time 1606 71 was his previous best time this will be surely a sizable personal best now come on we need to cheer him onto a 15 here it's getting tighter every set every second he is going to get there how much can he get under the 16 minute barrier five seconds very nearly 4.05 inside it in the end for the Wirral Metro swimmer Thomas Nelson 15 55 95 so uh, 10 second and more personal best for Thomas Nelson Tobias Robinson finishing second just ahead and we're talking about half a second ahead of Jack Baster in third and uh, fourth place swimmer just coming in Matthew Hinchcliffe in 16 19 53 still two to come lane number two Carl Chisholm will be the next and Daniel Wheeler of Newcastle There's an entry time of 16 15 will uh, sound to be quite some way outside that today found it a little bit tough to the swimmer in lane number seven, but he finishes off now. So a big new personal best for Thomas Nelson of the Wirral Metro. 15.55.95 for Thomas Nelson. A fantastic swim, absolutely brilliant. He's going to be sore tomorrow. They'll have a long swim down now. Get her some re good recovery in. If he's got any other swims later on and hopefully it'll be recovered for when they start. 
four of these swimmers have gone sub-16 before. And they are Archie Mitchell of City of Sheffield in three, Thomas Howley of City of Newcastle in four, Matthew Brecken of Loughborough in five, and Math uh, sorry, Martin Walton of Hatfield in lane number six. The others, by the way, Tom Derbyshire of Royal Wolverhampton in one, James Gibson, not that one, so Paul Metro in two, uh, Joseph Celio of City of Coventry in seven, and Julian Chan Kui Lin of Dulwich Dolphins in lane eight. It is Archie Mitchell turning first, 27.85. So long way to go in this race. 1,450 metres to go, but leader at 50 metres is the swimmer from the city of Sheffield. Sheffield had an excellent week so far. Love to see them finish this week off in style. Well, Nick Granger still to come for them. And uh, I must say, put it on record on our stream, just what a great job Russ Barber is doing. Uh, sadly, City of Sheffield Council withdrew their funding for the Sheffield programme about a year ago, a few months ago. So basically, they are working on no funding at all, They're working on swimmers' subs at the moment to pay his wages and keep the programme going. Yeah, it'd be such a shame to, to see City of Sheffield go under. They're starting now to, to produce a, a great squad. And a lot of young talent is coming through. And Punch Forge is one of the, the best pools in the world as well. So what, what better way to, or what better place to train than there? And I think that's probably why we've seen so many City of Sheffield swimmers really come through at this meet. Uh, the guidance of Russ Barber and the facilities that they have in Sheffield. And they now seem to get a nucleus of, of real talent that is moving the, the certainly the junior and uh, junior guys forward. Just to give you an idea of uh, what's happening in the world in the 1500 freestyle this year. Uh, uh, fastest time in the world is from the Italian Gregorio Paltronieri at 14.44.50. Uh, best in the Commonwealth, obviously that's uh, opportune to mention that with the Commonwealth Games coming later in the year. Mac Horton of Australia, 18 years of age, 14.51. Gabriele Detti, 1456, the Japanese Yamamoto 1459, so only four inside 50 minutes this week. And then we look for other Commonwealth swimmers, Ryan Cochran, very well established former world championship medalist uh, with a 1501-72 from Canada. Jordan Harrison from Australia, 1503-24. I was looking for the first Brit. That's probably not going to be any. Oh, Nick Granger. Is the first of the Brits with that Antwerp time of 15.10.60. So he's the fastest of the Brits, quite a way down the pecking order. I'm sure he'll go faster here. We haven't seen Dan Fogg register a time yet this year, and he'll be coming up in the final heat. But uh, at the moment, only four. Surprisingly, I know it's early in the year, but only four swimmers have actually gone sub-15 so far. Yeah, like I say, it is, it is very on, very early on in the uh, in the programme, in the calendar for the swimmers. And we do have the European Championships this year, as well as the Commonwealth Games. So a lot of the countries will be having their trials for either the Commonwealth or the Europeans. So expect those times to start to, to tumble. Hopefully there can be some Brits on the top of the rankings come tomorrow evening. Of course, the heats for the 1500 metres are this morning and the final will be tomorrow night. So they have a whole 36 hours rest. McGrawling to do a heat in the morning and then a final in the evening. So they do have a, a day and a half to rest. The swimmers will get a massage. They'll come in for a paddle tomorrow morning just to, to get rid of any lactic acid that was in their system from the day before. And then they'll really focus on trying to attack the 1500 metres tomorrow night. 409. Uh, sorry, 406.79 is Archie Mitchell's time at the 400 mark. Second place, Tom Derbyshire of Royal Wolverhampton, 407.84. And Tom Howley of the City of Newcastle in third place, the 411.39. Pretty much as we saw with the previous heat, though, there was somebody well out in front. That somebody well out in front this time is Archie Mitchell from City of Sheffield. His entry time is 15.59.10. 
So again, the old course, probably for a, a big improvement. Keep an eye on Tom Derbyshire, who is his nearest rival, who is uh, just coming uh, up alongside him, though he won't be aware of that, probably because there's a couple of lanes away from him. But uh, now the scrap has begun, really, between Archie Mitchell, our city of Sheffield, in lane number three, and Tom Derbyshire, Royal Wolverhampton, is coming up right onto his legs in lane number one. In fact, he's virtually right up to his waist now as they come onto the turn. And these two swimmers, 10, to 10 metres up, or five to 10 metres up on the rest of the field. Tom Derbyshire is making his move. Archie Mitchell. Archie Mitchell is repping, well, he was repping about 63s, and now he's just on 63.98 on that one, so he's, he's close to the 64 per 100, so he's getting slower every single 100 metres. And it looks like it is going to be Tom Derbyshire, if not winning uh, this 15. No, he's not, he's still second. It looks like he'll be taking the lead at the 600 metre mark. Tom Derbyshire's entry time is 16.02.47 compared to that of Archie's 15.59.10. So previously to today, it was about three seconds between them. There's nothing like that in this race. Not even three tenths of a second, I think, between them. It's very, very tight. Still just about holding on, but only just about holding on is Archie Mitchell. He'll turn to the lead of about half a second over Tom Derbyshire in second. Matthew Brecken has moved up into third. 618.90 and Tom Howley 620.35. So Archie Mitchell repping what now would you say, Ross? 63.989, I would say. On that, on, yeah. So it's around about 64s, yeah. Yep, yeah, so it is 63.89. Gap is not appreciably closing, though it might do on this turn. Let's have a look. Yeah, Tom Darbyshire just gets the turn better than does Archie. And that means for the first time in the race, he's in the lead, albeit only by 14 one hundredths of a second. But Matthew Brecken is in third place, and Thomas Howley in fourth. Now, I wonder whether this is a position where Tom Darbyshire is going to push on. I imagine now that Archie is aware where the danger is. You'll see uh, Blue Cap ahead of him, where it was behind him before not making uh, massive inroads forward about maybe half a body length between first and second at this turn which is the 700 turn and in fact the gap is only now seven one hundredths of a second yeah he seems to have just crept up onto arch mitchell and now he has edged out in front as our last hundred meters and he certainly do, he does have the momentum at the minute Archie Mitchell looks like he is starting to, to struggle to hold on to Tom Derbyshire. Just has the lead Tom Derbyshire has the uh, 96. I'm having three. problems with my six and my eights there. Is that a six or an eight on there? Tom Derbyshire. Tom Derbyshire has got an entry time. No, it is, yeah. Of 16.02.47. Yeah. 96, 98? 98. 98, thank you. Sorry, it's my, my close range eyesight. <laughs> People will say it's your long range eyesight after last night, but no, 98 for Tom Derbyshire and for Archie. A 96 is 18. So uh, two years differential between them. At the moment, the gap between them is only 0.62 of a second. It was only uh, one hundredth. Last time they turned at this end, now it's down or up to 0.62. Just want to see if anybody else is going to make the move. Trying to make his move in lane number five is Matthew Brecken. He's uh, getting appreciably closer to the top two, but still quite a long way adrift. So too Thomas Howley in fourth place for Newcastle. There's uh, 13 more lengths to go. So 600 more to come when they get back to this end. And now we can visibly see the blue cap much further ahead than it was of Tom Derbyshire against Archie Mitchell in lane number three. So whatever the Royal Wolverhampton swimmer has been doing over the last hundred seems to work pretty well because now there's an appreciable gap between first and second. Archie Mitchell digging in and uh, getting closer to him, definitely with a little bit of momentum in lane number five is Matthew Brecken. Yeah, so he has just started to turn that screw. 
Yeah, he's wrapping around. It was, the previous 100 was 63.5. That 100 was 63.1. So he's starting to get quicker as he gets further away from the field. He said it in the previous heat, but it's a lovely feeling when you start to stretch out from the rest of the field and you're out there on your own. And over 200 metres, he's taken four metres out of Archie Mitchell. So he's got that momentum going forward, which is great to have on the 1500. He certainly don't want to lose that rhythm and the technique because, as you just mentioned, there's still a long way to go. It's to 500 metres at this turn, so a third of the race. What is interesting to me at the moment is watching uh, Thomas Howley getting closer to Matthew Brecken, but Matthew Brecken is getting closer now to Archie Mitchell. Archie Mitchell, however, is not getting any closer to Tom Derbyshire. But Ryan doesn't do anything silly here, or the others don't do anything spectacular. will probably win this. That is uh, 1,000 metres gone. Another 10 lengths of the ball to go. And uh, Tom Derbyshire looking uh, pretty cool and pretty calm and very considered with his swim. But I can uh, visibly see that uh, Matt Brecken of Loughborough is getting closer to Archie Mitchell. Not that much closer, so not within range yet. But uh, the Newcastle swimmer Thomas Howley to the right of Matthew Brecken is getting closer and closer to his feet. And there won't be much of a gap between them as they turn at the far end. So you can see now huge gap. They're virtually alongside each other for uh, a large part of this race were Tom Derbyshire and Archie Mitchell. But now Tom Derbyshire has a lot of clear water between him and the rest. So just, if my maths are right, he went 63.17. This next 100 went 63.17. And for that 100, you'd have to give me a little bit more time, but I think it's 63.25. So 63.17, 63.17, 63.25. So consistently around that time, uh, the last three 100, he is just... 0.08 difference. Almost six seconds difference between the leader, Tom Derbyshire, and Archie Mitchell in second. Just wonder whether there's a possibility of Matthew Brecken catching the Sheffield swimmer. Still quite an appreciable gap between second and third. Not much between third and fourth, though. That's a good scrap between Matthew Brecken of Loughborough and Tom Howley of City Newcastle. And uh, virtually nothing between them. But the gap was 5.84 when they came down this end last time between the leader Tom Derbyshire and second place Archie Mitchell of City of Sheffield. So let's see whether 5.84 has been translated into a bigger margin. Looks like it. Looking very much like Tom Derbyshire has uh, extended that lead still further. It's up to 7.49. So he's taken uh, one and three quarter seconds out of the second place swimmer on that 100. It just ever so slightly dropped off the pace, point, point 0.19 slower than the previous 100. We're still consistently in 63 mid to lows. Uh, as you said, he is, every single stroke he's extending his lead over Archie Mitchell and the rest of the field. There's still that battle going for third place. It's a good one too, isn't it? It looks like it is now Matt Brecken that's just going to turn just ahead, oh no, just, just behind. But it won't be long before Matt Brecken is edging himself out in front for the third position. Well, the one, two, three, not quite solidified yet. One seems to be. Saw how big the lead was last time and uh, visibly looks to be getting bigger for Tom Derbyshire. He's swimming this absolutely to a T. Everything looking good from his point of view as the lead is now almost nine and a half seconds over Archie Mitchell. Then there's the battle going on, which is absolutely together between Matthew Brecken and Tom Howley. Remember, top eight times go through to the final of the 1500 freestyle for men tomorrow night. Not tonight, tomorrow night will be the final of the 1500 free. And uh, next time they come down the end, it will be the bell for Tom Derbyshire, the man ready with the bell to uh, ring in his ear and that will be uh, the best noise he will have heard all day because it means that the uh, torture of the 1500 from his point of view is virtually complete. That lead over uh, Archie Mitchell is extending still further. It's something like 
Well, nearly 25 metres now. Well, actually, about 20 metres between first and second. There's the bell to signify that Tom Darbyshire just has one more 100 freestyle to do before he's completed. Archie Mitchell will similarly hear that noise, and that's three together in third place. Yeah, three right. of them. Yeah, yeah, three of them. It's just uh, it crept up on us, but there's three of them now. Uh, they're all going to be separated by less than a metre. There's the final hundred. So who's got the fastest sprint down this last hundred? Who's the fittest? Who wants it more to get that third place? No doubt who the winner's going to be. And the second place for oh, three swimmers fighting it out for third place. Tom Darbshire has the finish in his sights. He's nearly done. He's got 25 metres more to go when he hits that red marker, as he does now. Remember, the entry time for Tom Darbyshire, 16.02.47. Going to be massively inside that. Huge new personal best coming his way once he touches at the end. We are talking huge in terms of a personal best, too. 15.43 compared with 16.02. That's in a completely different ballpark for him. It's been a struggle in the end, although he's going to get second place for the City of Sheffield swimmer, Archie Mitchell. He does a 15.58. That's a new personal best for him as well. Well done to Archie. He looked uh, quite tired at the end, but nonetheless, it's the best time that he's ever done. And third going to Joseph Sanio, who came from absolutely nowhere. It wasn't even mentioned until the last 100. And at 16.02, 81 for Joseph. Joseph, and that is right on his personal best, just outside, actually, not massively outside, but nonetheless, he uh, kind of left the best of us. Perhaps he had a little bit in reserve at the end as well, but uh, no doubt Tom Derbyshire was a class act in that field today. Yeah, huge PB, and he kept his calm over the first opening 400 metres, let Archie Mitchell go out. He stuck to his game plan, and then slowly and surely he chipped away at that lead. And here he is coming to... Finish the 1500 meters. This must be such a relief for these swimmers. He even puts his head down into the wall. Finishes with a huge PB of 1543.80. So that's the fastest time so far this morning. That's what the rest of the guys have to beat if they want to make the final tomorrow night. Giving himself a chance. Only a slight one, mind you, but uh, nonetheless, he's uh, in uncharted territory as Tom Derbyshire on the back of that. A couple of Sheffield swimmers in here. In lane number two, Tom Sunter. And Nick Granger going in lane number four. And uh, Caleb Hughes, who really had his breakthrough year in 2014, 2013. He's starting to show uh, what he can do maybe over 1,500 metres freestyle. But uh, it's an event that is certainly moving on. There's uh, a lot more depth in British 1,500 metres freestyle swimming now. Just need a few more quicker times so that we are competing on the world stage because uh, we're getting a lot more in and around the 15-minute mark, which is good. Could do with a few more getting down to join the likes of Dan Fogg. I'll give you the full one to eight. We have plenty of time on this one. Alex Dunk of Prescott in one. Tom Sunter of City of Sheffield in two. Craig Hamilton of Warren de Baths in three. Nick Granger, already done personal best in the 200 metres freestyle and 400 metres freestyle this week, goes in lane number four. Caleb Hughes of Hatfield in five. Jay Lelliot has had a good week for Bath University as well. He's in six. Chris Suggett of Swansea University. And then in uh, lane eight, it's Stevenson Gaynor of Nova Centurion. And at the first under split, Nick Ranger, as you might expect, with all the speed he's got from 200 and 400, leading at 57.25. Yep. What I like about uh, Nick Ranger is very, very positive, always attacks his racers, is not afraid to have a go. Doesn't matter who is racing, whether it's Robbie Rennick, James Guy, or no doubt when he gets to the senior level, any of the big boys just gets in, cracks on with it, and does his best. Caleb Hughes from Hatfield, lane just up, up from him. And a fantastic European juniors last year, winning the 4 by 2 as well as winning medals in the 1500. So again, he's showing his versatility going from the 200 metres all the way up to the 1500. And of course, he does do the open water events as well. 
Nick Granger did his personal best earlier on in the year. He is the top Briton in terms of time this year in a 15.10.60. And uh, Craig Hamilton at second at the 200 mark in 15. 159.66. Tom Sunter from Sheffield. So Sheffield one and three at the moment is in third place. His split time at the 200 is 159.98. So they're uh, repping well below the 60 at the moment. We're really impressed with Jay Elliott from University of Bath this week. First time under 350 on the 400 meters. Virtually unknown, or well, certainly unknown to, to, to me. Um, obviously, his coaches will have, have known what he's capable of. He doesn't, he doesn't actually train with Dave McNulty in, in the Bath Performance Centre. He's actually in the university group, so he really has snuck up. He's done a great 200 and, of course, a great 100 metres as well. So I think this is Chris Alderson's, uh, Chris Alderson's uh, bunch. So Chris knows about 1,500 freestyle having done it himself. Yeah, he certainly does. Well, he's watching and see how his charges are doing and seeing whether they can put any kind of pressure or he can put any kind of pressure on Nick Granger and he is doing just that. Nick Granger though is leading at 300. The pace has dropped off just a little from where it was. 302.10 for Nick Granger. Second place is Craig Hamilton. Third is Tom Sunter and Caleb Hughes in fourth mode. Jay Lilliot in sixth in a 3029 split. Alex Dunk was another one of the juniors that was in, in the European Championships, junior that is, last year. And he posted a lifetime best in the 400 metres freestyle earlier on this week. Tom Sunter, another one of those swimmers coming from the city of Sheffield. He really is starting to produce some excellent talent. Well, three of them loping along. Best way to describe it, because that's what happens at 1500. Nick is uh, really built for. You think Nick, the way he's built, is kind of built for uh, to be a speed merchant at 50 and 100, because he's uh, he's built like the proverbial brick, you know what. Um, but um, you know, he has got. I suppose it's not a bad thing being a, a big man for the 1500. But normally you associate bigger men with the the 50s and the 100s. Yeah, he's, he certainly is probably bigger some, than some of the uh, the 100 meter guys. You know, he's six foot six. Over 100 kilos, and he's got to carry that the whole way, the, the best part of a mile. It'll be interesting to see how he does. I thought you were about to say, Pat, I did 26 yesterday. No, he was that effect. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you're not in the water, though. No, and I'm not as big as he is. Obviously, you do 26 miles and 365 yards in the water. That wouldn't happen, would it? And that 365 yards right at the end is, yeah. the, is the worst bit. <laughs> That's a bit you probably could do. That's a bit I could yeah. probably <laughs> attempt to do. and would not be very successful at it, mind you. Let's look at three and four, because they are virtually locked together as we come into this turn, which will be the 500-metre turn for Nick Granger, just about holding off the advances of Craig Hamilton, but only just by four one-hundredths of a second, or about five. Not quite in a line, but a spearhead formation pretty much here with Nick Granger, Caleb Hughes not too far away. Tom Sunter starting to make his way through. And uh, also Nick Granger has opened up an advantage. That was very, very tight between Nick and Craig Hamilton at the last turn. But suddenly there's a bit of a gap opening up between first and second. Look at this. Suddenly, from nowhere, he's taken a second and a half out of Craig Hamilton. But I was talking to Russ Barber about him the other day, actually. And he said you know, he's been, been trying things out in, in different competitions around the world this year. And Nick came to, to Russ and said, how do I swim this? And Russ said, you know what? Go with them for the first four or five hundred meters and then just drop the bomb on one of the hundreds and it looks like that's exactly what he's just done swam with him for 500 meters and then just popped in and I'll tell you the splits actually because it's quite interesting to to hear the splits and just do the maths on this but he's gone 63-1 63-6 and then he's just gone 60 points one. 6 point one. So 63 one, 63.6, and then just dropped in with a 60.1. So that's a big acceleration, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's three and a half seconds. So that's why he's extended his lead, as you can see. And there's not many swimmers around the world that can just do that and then carry on. And that is just a, fan, a fantastic, you know, 
certainly uh, is showing his talent. And like I said, not many people around the world can actually do that. Changing behind him, though, Jay Lelliot is now his nearest challenger from Bath University. He's moved right up into second place with Craig Hamilton in third. So what's happening behind Nick Granger? The race is transforming, not changing at the front because Nick Granger has uh, opened up a good advantage. Not a massive one, though. Craig Hamilton is still there, but now it's Jay Lelliot who's his closest adversary. And the gap is just about 1.6 between the leader, Nick Granger, and Jay Lelliot in second place. Craig Hamilton is in third, Tom Sunter of Sheffield in fourth. Just give you their uh, entry times and say Nick Granger's best time coming earlier this year in 15.10.60. Uh, Caleb Hughes, who we've not mentioned yet, is just a little bit off the pace in lane number four. The uh, time for Jay Lelliot. 15.34.95, so again, he'll be looking to improve sizably on that. And Craig Hamilton's best time, 15.28.57. So Nick Granger is not making appreciable strides over the rest of the moment. It's not a huge lead over first and second, but it's Jay Lelliot who's in second place and starting to make his way back. Perhaps with the second win is Craig Hamilton. And in fact, the gap between first and second between Nick Granger and Jay Lelliot is getting smaller and smaller with every 50. It's an appreciably smaller one this time round. Just 0.8 of a second between Granger and Jay Lelliot. He's having a great week here. He's absolutely flying. And so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Nick Granger, after putting that burst of speed in, to change pace halfway through a race takes so much energy out of you. And you know, if he can, if he can do it, and he can really can win the race with by putting a, a burst in the middle of the 200, then that's great. But if it does affect the last 500 meters, then there's no point doing it. But he is actually uh, continuing to carry on. But just look at Jay Lennon's turns. And I know I mentioned this already in the 1500, but he's now starting to, to push it on to seven, six, seven meters. And the less you swim, the easier it should be. But again, that's a skill that you have to work hard in training. And it seems like he has really delivered himself onto the British stage this week. I should also mention that uh, Nick Granger has a bad back. He's injured his back, so that may not help too much with the turns. It may well be why Jay Lelliot seems to be making up a bit of ground off those turns. When they're in the kind of streamlined straight line, the 45 metres between the walls, somebody's lost a cap, by the way. Uh, that is lane number three. Craig Hamilton's cap is now floating on the top of the surface, so he's gone without uh, any head protection. But uh, certainly on the turns, Jay Lelliot is looking better. But when it's between the walls, Nick Granger seems to have something. Yeah, and obviously the bigger you are, the, the further away you can turn. But let's look at Jay's turns. Look at that. Seven, eight, nine meters underwater. And like I said, that is really hard to do, and especially on the 1500 because of the oxygen jet depth that you get from holding your breath for so long. But you are so much quicker going under the water than you are to swim on top of the water going through it. So that's, uh, he's got great skills, and if he carries on with this, this, his work at the University of Bath, expect him to be an extremely good swimmer. So what's the gap here? 0.57 now. Off the turn, again, Jay Lelliot makes up some ground, but then Nick Granger gets that ground back again in the next 35 metres or so. Has been so far. Perhaps on this length he won't, because Jay Lelliot seems to have actually appreciably clipped the wings of Nick Granger here. Nick Granger moving across the right-hand side of his lane as well. He was pretty central for the most part, but now he's moving across to the right-hand side of the lane. He's still got the lead on the turn. It's down to a quarter of a second now, and you'll see on that turn, virtually alongside him now, is Jay Lelliot. Yeah, Nick Grange is not in the kind of form in terms of, of this race to post a PB, a personal best. But Jay Lelliot, it certainly is. And he'll be having a go. He's got the 200, the 200 and the 400 out of the way. And he's just got the 1500 to focus on now. And you, see that you can visibly see that Nick Granger turns quite considerably before the wall than, than Jay. But Jay uses all the, the momentum off the wall going, going six, seven meters, and then they pop up around about the same time. Well, they do, and then between that and when they turn the next end, it's interesting that Nick Granger 
danger Sonny appreciably gets a quarter of a second or a half a second back but now they are virtually together in fact they're going to turn I think in identical time pretty much yeah no still a quarter of a second Nick Ranger still got about a quarter of a second over Jay Elliott so that's not really changing yet third place a long way back 8.41 is Craig Hamilton top eight times for the 1500 meters freestyle final tomorrow one more heat is yet to come Nick Granger has posted a 15-10 this year it's not going to be a 15-10 here though he is uh, finding a little bit more speed as he comes into the 1200 meter mark 300 more to go and the lead was a quarter of a second it might be a little bit more here yeah 0.74 over Jay Lelliot at that turn just looking at the splits from the, the 800 meter mark he went 60.1 61.9 so just 0.2 different and 62.0 so almost no difference there and then 61.5 so he dropped half a second and then now he's just gone 61.7 so again just drop the bomb to move ahead for the rest of the field and he just seemed to have that in his locker does Nick Granger 102 now over Jay Lelliot. Let's see if that gap is uh, dwindling between second and third. No, it's not. That's getting bigger, if anything. So at the moment, we're not going to be seeing any last minute charge from Craig Hamilton, it would seem. And Nick Granger would appear with 200 to go to have this race under his control. Certainly, he was under pressure with Jay Lelliot for. Uh, about three or four hundred meters of this race but now Granger has opened up an advantage of 1.25 seconds over Jay Lelliot where it was down to a quarter of a second at one point but there still might be a sprint finish from Jay Lelliot who will uh, definitely want to get into that final tomorrow and definitely will want to post a, a really fast time yeah expect these two guys with only one heat to to, to go to, to be into the final tomorrow night for Daniel Fogg, Thomas Allen, Jack Bennell going in the next heat so I expect these two guys to be well and truly in the centre lanes. It'll be a cracking final tomorrow night with almost the the old guard in Daniel Fogg against the emerging talents of Nick Granger, Jada Elliott. Big find Nick Granger for Russ Barber. Introduced to swimming by his sister, who used to be a swimmer. She no longer does swim, and uh, she, she advised Nick to take up swimming. He did, and uh, Ross Barber says, you know what, if this lad could appreciate how good he could be, he would be a fantastic swimmer. As it is, he's a very, very good swimmer, but he says he just doesn't quite appreciate how good potentially he could be. I think we're starting to show that this year. 15-10 early in the season. Not going to be quite that quick here. May have saved that and want to save that for the final tomorrow. Jay Lelliot is digging in, trying to get back at him, but uh, that's an appreciable gap between first and second. However, like the last race, the uh, scrap is really on for third place between Thomas Sunter and Craig Hamilton. Tom Sunter has left something right at the back end of the race, and Craig Hamilton's trying to respond. Well, we'll see Nick Granger home and see what kind of time he can produce. It's going to be around about, what, 15.25 here? Probably a bit quicker, probably the 15.22, 15.23, depending on how this last 25 metres. But look at Jay Elliott come down this final 50 metres, and this now is a sprint finish to the wall between these two swimmers, and this is a cracking swim from Jay, but it's going to be Nick Granger that takes heat number three in 15.22.49. Jalen Elliott, entry time of 15.34.95. Actually goes 15.23.33. So he's gone 11 seconds quicker. That's not a bad PB, is That's it? a very, very good PB, and I'm sure those down in Bath, Chris and the boys, will be uh, looking on and very happy with that performance, and indeed, with the speed he had at the end, I just wonder how much he might have in reserve for tomorrow. That's a gruelling event. Nick Granger about 12 seconds outside his personal best, but uh, I say all that can come tomorrow night. It's just qualification today. 15-22-49 for the big man. Holding on to the lane run for... Uh, all he's worth, but uh, no, he had nothing there. A sprint finish. He wasn't expecting a sprint finish with Jay Lelliot, was he? <laughs> with the end, but he got one. And 
15-22-49. Compared to Jay Lady, it's 15-23-33. Craig Hamilton in third. Tom Santo, 15-36. Uh, just outside, his personal best of 15-35. Cynic Granger's last 100 was 59.5. And Jay Lelliot was a lot quicker. So I don't know his exact time, but he came back really, really quick over the last 100 metres. So certainly one of the, the swimmers of the meet this week, Jay. And hopefully he can back it up with the final tomorrow night. Here comes Daniel Craig. No, it's mm -hmm. Daniel Fogg. Just look like Daniel Craig. He looks nothing like Daniel Craig. <laughs> I think he does. I think he does. I think he could be James Bond's double. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> anyway, he's going in lane number four for Loughborough. Daniel Jervis of Swansea in one. Gareth Mills of City of Sheffield. Expect something quite special from him, I think, the way he's been swimming this week in lane two. Tom Allen of Swansea in three. Danny Fogg, I mentioned already. Jack Burnell of Loughborough in five. Another open water swimmer along with uh, Dan. Joel Knight of Millfield in six. Martin Kremen, who missed the qualification time for the uh, Scottish Commonwealth Games team in the 1500 freestyle by one one hundredth of a second. Oh dear! <laughs> last week, so he needs to better 1540.77. Needs to do a 76, and he'll make the uh, Scottish team. That's that's harsh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I let him in. Yeah, well, obviously the the time is a consideration. I'm sure he'll get the time. I hope he will here because uh, he was absolutely. Crestfallen last week, and uh, he is in the yellow cap in lane number seven in Porteous of City of Glasgow. Lane. I think that Gareth Mills might just show us uh, something quite special here today because he's really, really improving in leaps and bounds along with uh, the rest of the Sheffield boys. Gareth Mills has kind of been almost the forgotten one, if you like, but I think uh, in the 1500 he might uh, possibly step up to the plate. This is not quite as uh, clear cut as the previous one, Dan Fogg in lane number four and Jack Burnell are uh, one and two. Not in that order, actually. Jack Burnell is just ahead of Dan Fogg at that turn. Tom Allen in third. And uh, come on, Gas, don't let me down in fourth place from City of Sheffield. He is in fourth right now. Jack Burnell was one of the, the rising stars in 2012. Came third at the British Championships for the 1500 behind Daniel Fogg and David Davis. And it'll be interesting to see how he responds now to the talent that's coming through in Nick Granger on this event and the others that we've already spoken to. So he's got a bit of a point to prove now because he's been a lot of talk about him. He's been training with Kevin Renshaw for the last two or three years and training partner of Daniel Fogg. So he's got all the experience he needs in the same lane, lane as him when he's in training in Loughborough. And now, like these two are going head to head. Here's a question for you, Ross. What's happened to Tom Allen? Because Tom Allen was on World Championship teams not so long ago and just seems to have stepped off the pace. Yeah, Tom, Tom seems really good when he, he actually gets into the open water uh, situation. So he, he seems to be better out in the open than he does actually in the pool. But obviously, a lot of the times you have to qualify via the pool. So you know, he's in a bit of a catch-22 situation where he needs to get to the events, so he needs to improve on his pool swimming. But once he gets there, he's very, very good. He's got a perfect stroke for open water. You can just see he just lifts his head a little bit when he breathes, and that's not too dissimilar to, to how you'd swim open water. And kerry -Ann can talk about this a lot more than I can, but he's got a strong leg kick behind him and a very nice rhythm, and that really does help you when the water gets a little bit choppy. He's back in third at the moment as the two Luffra boys battle it out. They do this uh, every day in training, obviously not quite as competitive, but nonetheless when they get into a competitive environment, they're used to this kind of uh, mentality in the approach to their swimming. Dan Fogg leading only marginally by 0.15 of a second in the early stages of this 1500. Jack Burnell in second, Tom Allen in third. Keep an eye on Martin Kremen in sixth place and keep an eye on uh, Gareth Mills as well, who is currently in fourth. Yeah, so seeing the two training partners go head to head over the opening 400 meters. And there's nothing worse than losing to your training partner. But it is at the minute. Daniel Fogg turning first in four minutes, 0.63. So they're bang on the minute barrier mark. 
I think I'm right in saying that Dan is the only current swimmer we have who's uh, broken the 15-minute barrier, aren't we? Because he, he did that at the Olympic trials. Yep, that's right. I think he went around about 15, 53, 54, 55. So he went considerably went under the 15-minute mark, and he's done that since as well. But I think, no, we've not had many swimmers go under 15 minutes for the 1500. Think, obviously, the first one to do it was Graham Smith. And then it was Dave. That's right, and uh, Dan's done it as well. In fact, there might be the only three. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's in a very exclusive club to go under 15 minutes. David did it a few times. Did a 14. I think the British record is 14:45 from memory. And that yep. was a uh, shiny suit time uh, back in uh, Beijing, where everybody has to do 14:45 to even make a final. Yeah, no, actually, Dave's best time was in 2004 when he won the the bronze medal. And I think it's 14:44.9, and that's certainly digging into my memory. Um, so I could be wrong on that, but that's I think his his best time was from. 2004. He's been very, very close, like you said, in, in Beijing, where he did go 14.45. So he's around about 10 seconds faster than, than Daniel Fogg on their personal best. But shiny suit days, of course. Of course. And still these two swimmers. Almost getting stroke for stroke. And Daniel Fogg does have the advantage of around about half an arm length. And Thomas Allen is keeping them, keeping company with them. Just about point, well, around about two meters behind, two and a half meters behind. 1.7 seconds behind the front two. But it's Daniel Fogg turning first in six minutes, point four zero eight. And uh, less than half a second, Jack Bunnell. Tom Allen turning in 6.05.78. Uh, four is Martin Kremen from Sterling Swim. 6.10.55. Again, trying to find the qualifying time. He needs to make the final, really, for tomorrow night, which is a big ask on 15.40. needs to uh, up that rate just a little bit. There'll be uh, quite a few in around that time. Just look at this, though. Two training partners. I mean, right old scrap here. Jack Bennell and Dan Fogg. He just changed hands a few times. Dan Fogg just back at the front of the pack again. Marginally so. There's only uh, three tenths of a second separating first and second. Tom Allen in third place. Fourth is Martin Kremen. Fifth, Joel Knight. Uh, actually level with Gareth Mills on that turn. So it's looking at Daniel Fogg's time of 7.05.81. Is pretty much exactly four seconds quicker than Nick Granger at the same stage. Nick Granger was 709.83. And Foggy's time, 705.81, so bang on four seconds. It looks like Jack Bunnell now is starting to creep up. It'll be interesting to see who turn, gets the feet on the wall first. These two are battling it out. Both want to centre lane for tomorrow night's final. And also they want to make sure they get to that final. But at the minute they are a long way ahead of Nick Ranger, who has the fastest time so far on 15.22.44. Daniel Fogg, 807.91. So just starting to 62 point one of that 100 meters. Oh, you were so close. 14.45.95, David Davis's uh, record, still in Athens. That was the time he set in winning that bronze medal in the 1500 meters freestyle. And then had to do a really cracking time in Beijing to make that final. I think uh, that's when things really had moved on. And we having to, you know, nobody can hold back in the heats in Beijing. You had to do a rapid time to even get into that final. I think ultimately that's what did for David in terms of trying to get a medal in that final because he uh, had to put so much in to the heat swim to even qualify in the first place that uh, I think there was an awful lot left in the locker on the next day for him.
This is the 900 meter mark, and look at it. It keeps changing hands at lead. Jack Burnell's back in front again. Dan Fogg is about three tenths of a second adrift, but it's not much, obviously. Tom Allen in third place. Martin Kremen, 916.39, on course for around about a 1540 or thereabouts, and he really is cracking on with the yellow cap. Need to keep an eye on Martin. Uh, hoping to make that final and hoping to get that qualifying time for Scotland. As far as the English swimmers are concerned at the front of the back, who's going to take the lead this time? Jack Burnell just in front on the turn, but it's very, very marginal. 0.39 between those two. And Tom Allen's not too far adrift either. 2.16 behind the leader. No, a good swim from Tom. He's keeping close to the leaders. There's still Jack Burnell that is just starting to edge out in front from his training partner, Daniel Fogg. And they're still three and uh, oh, nearly four seconds ahead of the heat before at the same stage. Nick Granger turned at this 100 in 10.15.95. So it's 10.12.52. And Jack's starting to pull away. Jack is actually going for it. He is leaving Dan Fogg a little bit behind. Wasn't much of a gap last time. You can see visibly, well, he had kicked in. I think Dan then suddenly said, no, you better not, because I need to keep with you for a bit here. So he suddenly upped his stroke rate and suddenly uh, kicking a bit harder. Jack Burnell responds again. It's a really titanic tussle between these two who know each other's moves and swims and performances inside out. And now the gap is 0 0.04. So Whereas Jack did make the break, Dan Fogg responds, and now Jack's responding again. Yeah, it's only the heels, but they certainly do not want to lose it out to each other. Daniel Fogg was really pleased with his 400 free on day one, going under 350. That's what he said he wanted to do beforehand. Jack, on the other hand, was really disappointed with his swim going 356. So one swimmer was happy coming into this event, the other one wasn't, but they're both pretty much neck and neck at the 1100 meter mark. But it is Daniel Fogg that's just over half a second ahead. And Martin Kremen is starting to make inroads on Tom Allen. In fact, Martin Kremen might be at third place when they get to the next turn. He's making a lot of moves very quickly in lane number seven. So you're not going to catch the top two at this stage, but Martin Kremen and Tom Allen aren't too far apart. They're separated by four lanes. What's the gap between third and fourth at the moment? It's negligible. It's actually about a second between Tom Allen and Martin Kremen now. Yeah, pretty much exactly a second, 1.04, separating third and fourth. So we just mentioned that Tommy's having a good swim, but he's starting to drop off now, just as his hat is starting to drop off. Uh, oh, yeah, he's Martin, wrestling with that. Martin Kremen is coming into third position, but it's Daniel Fogg that is starting to extend his lead over Jack Burnell. He turns in 12, 16.10. Just under a second advantage over Jack Burnell as we look at Nick Granger's time. The same, it is 12.19.2, so it's still around about three seconds ahead of Nick Granger's time. So, fully expect these guys to be going around about 15.20 this morning, which will be the fastest two qualifiers for tomorrow night's final. Martin Kremen is in third position, and he has 0.7 advantage, 0.5 advantage over Thomas Allen. You really do need to be coming in the, in the top three in your heat to be making it through to tomorrow night's final. You might make it if you're fourth, but you are leaving it a little bit to luck. So there's no doubt it is Daniel Fogg that's extending his lead over Jack Burnell. Come what? on, the Kremen. It was a second, and now it's 1.4. So every 100 is getting around about 0.3, 0.4 advantage on Jack Burnell. But Martin Kremen really is flying in lane number seven. Good to see. Come on, Martin, going to make the Scottish team. That there is absolutely no doubt in my mind. Such a determined young man. Very funny. Following on Twitter, he's very, very amusing. Watching uh, Dan Fogg, no, taking pretty much control of this race now and the next time they come up this end it will be time for the bell because that will be 1400 meters done and they'll have 100 left to go so it looks like uh, dan fogg has got the measure of jack Burnell. 
And Martin Kremen has got the measure of Tom Allen. In fact, Martin Kremen's getting a bit closer, if anything, to Jack Burnell. Still quite a big distance. He's not going to overhaul him. I don't think he's not going to take over, but this is going to be a very quick time for the Scotsman. Here comes the bell. 100 to go for Dan Fogg. Now for Jack Burnell. And now for Martin Kremen. And Tom Allen has uh, dropped back quite a long way into fourth place. Dan Fogg's done pretty much what he has to do. He just wants to close this out and make sure this race is secured. Martin Kremen, however, has other ideas on Jack Burnell. I think he's given himself a little bit too much to do here, Ross, but he is coming yeah. back. Yeah, he's got too, far too much to do. But it does actually look like Jack Burnell is, is settling for second place. He's just been swimming this last two, three hundred metres out. Doesn't look like he's in too much pain, but it's Daniel Fogg that really is extending his lead. And he's got 25 metres to go. So the only worry I have for, for Daniel Fogg is if he's neck and neck with Nick Granger going down that final 100 metres, you know, has Nick got too much speed? So that'll be interesting to see tomorrow night. You know, Foggy can turn on the afterburners like he has done here. And he's going to finish first in 15.19.58. The fastest qualifier, second place, is Jack Burnell, 15.23.94. And Martin Kremen, 15.26. 6.46. Is that enough for the Scottish team? Well, I think you have to qualify in the final. I don't think you can do it in a, in a heat, but that is 12 seconds quicker than his entry time. So Martin Kremen has gone from a 15.40 to a 15.26. And he'll be thinking to himself, why could I not do this last week? And Daniel Fogg, Daniel Fogg looks very relaxed there. Looks like he's just been for a Sunday swim. I've just done pretty much a mile. It looks very good, actually. Daniel Fogg, he didn't panic at any stage when Jack went out fast. Uh, when Jack made his move, Daniel responded and took over. And excellent swim from Daniel Fogg. Fastest swimmer into tomorrow night's final. Still a good 25 seconds off his personal best. Just waiting for Ian Porteous to finish. And uh, before we hand back, I'm going to give you the eight to qualify for the final because that's uh, important to see who has missed out and who has made it for tomorrow night's 1500 final. The winning time, there you go, 15 19 58 for Dan Fogg, Jack Burnell in second, and a new personal best for Martin Kremen of 15 26.40 with Tom Allen in fourth. So these are the eight Dan Fogg, Nick Granger, Jay Lelliot, Jay, Jack Burnell, and Martin Kremen making it through uh, very comfortably through to that final of the 1500 meters freestyle tomorrow night. So, Kerry ann a tactical race, a long race, but a tactical race. Yeah, that, that last race was definitely tactical. Um, you know, Dan Fogg was pushing and then Jack Bunnell was pushing. They trained together every single day as well. So, you know, I'm sure that rivalry between those two boys is really fierce and Foggy did not want to let them win. <laughs> Indeed. So, talk me through the stages of a 1500, because obviously we've seen that the splash and dash, the 53, and we talked a little bit about the 800s as yeah. well, as in terms of technique and sort of a game plan but 1500 meters is another yeah completely race, completely isn't it i mean it's almost double the 800 so you've got to make sure that you're not going out that hard um on that first sort of three four hundred meters and then you have to think it's like a 15 16 minute race and you have to be on it for every second of that 15 minutes and you're swimming pretty much max so in open water we're swimming for two hours the pace that we're swimming is, is slightly bit slower than these guys are swimming but you know they have to be thinking Thinking the whole time about everything they need to do with someone needs to think about their stroke count and the stroke rate are they hitting their turns well because there's 16 turns in that race they need to make sure that they're nailing every single one of them because we talk about you know the starts the turns the finishes and how important they are in sprints yeah but it, it doesn't matter if it's a sprint or a 1500 yeah. meters they're equally as important aren't they? it's almost more important really for the turns in a 1500 if you can be taking half a second off the rest of the field every time you turn you know that all adds up at the end of the race yeah and if I'm sure you've had the experience of going very hard at the start of a distance <laughs> race and then dying out just that little bit as well. Yeah, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> let's not talk about that at all. Now, we have got an absolute treat for you here on the live stream. Kerry ann I'll let you introduce this one because I think we're going to see something very special live here from Tollcross. Well, I'm really excited to see Ruta Melitute. She's going to do a 50 meter breaststroke on her own. Nobody else is Ruta against the clock. It's going to be I'm suspecting a really fast swim. I think she really wants to make a statement, but as you know, the time goes, I'm not really sure 
what she's looking to do. So just to summarise, we're going to see the Olympic champion. Yes. Is going to swim 50 metre breaststroke. She's a world Herself. record holder as well for the 100 breaststroke. Okay, so and this is broken down to 50 metres. She's swimming against the clock yep. for 50 metres. And this is coming right now live here from the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Are you going to make a prediction, carrie Ann? I love asking you to make <laughs> predictions. I, I'm not going to make a prediction because all the predictions I've made this week haven't really worked out as far as that. So I'm not really going to say um, very much at the moment. But, you know, she, she can't do any of the finals, unfortunately, because she isn't English, uh, Scottish or Welsh, so she can't do those ones. Um, but, yeah. OK, so that's why we haven't seen her in the, the semi-finals or finals. Right, well, we're going to hand you over now to Bob and Ross, who are going to do the commentary for this. But fingers crossed we're going to see something very, very special. Well, last year, Ruta Militito, of course, she won the Olympic gold in London in the 100 in 2012. And uh, but we thought that was a fluke, we thought that was a flash in the pan that she couldn't back it up. Well, what's she going to do in 2013? Well, she did the fastest time in the world in the 50 breaststroke, fastest time in the world in the 100 breaststroke, 29.48 is the 50 breaststroke world record set at the world championships in barcelona last august and a few days previous to that she set the new mark in the 100 breaststroke and she has the fastest time in the world in the 100 this year so there's not much this girl cannot do and let's not forget though she's lithuanian she is a product of the plymouth leander system yeah we, we tried to claim her um you know she hasn't got an english name or she doesn't come from in or britain um, but she certainly trains in england in plymouth leander and John Rudson a fantastic job with, with Ruta. I remember watching the, the uh, Olympics um, and I, I remember watching her swim in heats and she wasn't even in one of the seeded heats so she wasn't even in the top uh, 24 swimmers going into the Olympic Games. I remember watching her do this time and I thought Wow, that's that's good. If she can do that again in the final, if she gets there, she'll probably win a medal. And then in the semi-final, she went and did a faster time. And I was like, geez, this is a 14, 15 year old girl. If she can do that again, she will probably get a medal. And, and then in the final, she went and went even quicker and she won the Olympic gold medal. So absolutely fantastic story. And she handled the pressure really, really well and then backed it up last year with the World Championship title as well. So you know, she's, a, she's a, a credit to herself and a, and a credit to her club and she's a fantastic athlete. Well, very few of the coaches have moved away from Paul Dick they want to see something special. Let's just uh, pass you back down to the studio and get uh, some more thoughts from Kerry Ann before uh, Ruta actually comes on the pool deck. Waiting a few few moments uh, more before we'll see that race, but that race is going to happen. Um, obviously, she's psyching herself up, getting ready for a 50 metre sprint. Yeah. Exciting times. I mean, it's not a race, so she doesn't have to stick to a, a specific uh, sort of call room time or a call room, call room procedure. So she's making sure that she is properly ready for this race. Because I'm sure some pe people would be asking, you know, it's difficult to swim uh, by yourself, you know, to try and, and get a very special time, which I'm not going to say it in case <laughs> I jinx myself. Um, but it's difficult to swim by yourself. But I mean, for. For her, is that going to be? Is that going to make any difference? Well, she's an outstanding swimmer. She is world class. You know, top of the field on the breaststroke for the woman in the world. So, I think she'll just need some time. You know, to make sure that she's properly ready. She has psyched herself right up for this race because she's going to have to do it all on her own. She is indeed. So we'll see this this race, and then tonight at six o'clock, um, we'll be seeing you yourself uh, live uh, live on Sky Sports Two, starting from six o'clock. Of course, the stream will be on um, at five to six as well. Um, but I think she's uh, she's getting ready is is Ruta. So what will be going through her mind right now? Right now, she'll just be making sure that she nails her stroke count, making sure that her start is great. She's definitely gonna go out to to that first 25 to be really fast, really. Strong strong and make sure that she finishes on a full stroke. And strong is a word that I would put with her as well. Yeah, so I think um, she's going to have to make sure that she just does it on her own. You know, she's got her, she's, sorry, she's swimming already on her own, yeah. but make sure that she's concentrating on getting every part of her stroke and her technique right for this race. And for her age as well, she is so, so strong, so powerful. We've seen her already this week in the, in the heats. She just dominates the field, <laughs> doesn't she? There's nothing holding her back whatsoever. I know for me as a freestyler sitting here watching Ruta do that, that start, I mean, she's just incredible. And it's great for us that we 
have our junior breaststroke girls and our senior breaststroke girls watching her, seeing what she does, so that it's something to aspire to. And she is training in Britain. She's training with John Rudd. So, you know, she really is ready to, to go. And she's, she's coming out now for the start of her race. So okay. I think um, we are going to make sure that we're her biggest fan club. OK, well, let's see the magic happen. I'm going to throw you back to Ross and Bob for something very, very special. Jenny Johansson has the fastest time in the world this year, 30.73, set at the Swim Cup in Eindhoven. Ruta Meliatite has the second fastest time in the world this year, 30.83. But of course, she has the fastest time of all time, set at the World Championships in Barcelona last year. 30.83 set here in Glasgow just a few days ago is her best time of 2014 but what are we about to see in the next half a minute a quick start we always get that 0.61 off the blocks for Ruta Melitite she's going to get some applause she's going to get some encouragement she'll get some support 30.83 her time this year she's going to certainly surely improve on that 29.48 is the best time ever in this event set at the world championships in barcelona last year keep an eye we'll keep an eye on it for you on the clock because it's getting into the 29 range 29.92 it is the fastest in the world this year Nobody has been under 30 until now. Ruta Melitite, number one in the world, as indeed she was with a time in 2013. Not quite the world record, but nonetheless, the fastest in 2014. Yeah, she, she, she didn't normally get the... She normally was off at the blocks in around about 5.8, and she was off in 6.1. So not the fastest reactions off the block, not that that would have made much of a difference. And she did a fantastic time, world leading time this year of 29.92. And she just seems to get quicker and quicker as the 50 metre goes, and that's probably why she's probably suited to the 100 metres a little bit more. She doesn't die off towards the end of the 100 metres. She does carry on that momentum going forward, and that is why she's in champion the world champion and many more titles to come to her name in the future 29.92 is the time for Ruta Melitite in a little exhibition there and that has usurped Jenny Johansson from the Swim Cup in Eindhoven this year Ruta Melitite number one in the world for 2014 Blink, you'll miss that one. <laughs> Fastest time in the world this year. Yeah, that was really good. She had to do that all on her own as well. At yeah. the end of a really long session, you know, she had a few 1500s that she had to kind of wait through for that. But a great swim, great start, and a great finish as well. Yeah, speaking of the start, she was just off the block so, so fast there, wasn't she, Carrie ann Yeah, yeah her start see. is just absolutely electric. She just has the spring ability. And I know that you can't really tell from there, but if there was other girls swimming with her right then, she would already be body length ahead of all of them. And what is it about? About her stroke because we were mentioning how powerful she is earlier but she's just so powerful and controlled isn't she well the power in her legs that she is generating adding that to the really fast stroke that rate that you see there that is what's making her being pulled through the water really really quick and she's probably counting every single stroke so that by now she knows that she's got three or four strokes left until she hits the wall so that she was on a full stroke and not half a stroke and there you see it hits the wall with a bang so fastest time in the world this year for Ruta and that was great to see yeah. here on the, the live stream as well. So this evening, Kerry ann finals tonight. Who are you looking out for? I'm really looking forward to seeing Jazz Carling in the 800. She isn't rested for this, but she did a really great heat swim. So I think she'll be wanting to make sure that she gets in and amongst sort of the top five in the world from the 800 tonight. And from the guys tonight? From the guys tonight, there'll be the 50 freestyle for the men. That is the blue ribbon. This will be literally, and I know I've said literally, <laughs> the fastest man in the pool. So it's the semi-finals tonight. I can't wait to see how they get on. Yep, indeed. So that's tonight. The action will be kicking off at five to six here on the live stream and Sky Sports will be kicking off the action at six o'clock. So do not miss it. Of course, you'll see all the live semi-finals and finals here tonight, all coming from the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. We'll see you later.